Hey, I really appreciate it. No doubt. And we got a mother, a other brother. His name is Tony too. Anthony <laughs> from the movie blog. What's going on, man? What's going on? Now? Looking forward to having a nice, nice breakdown of this episode, this finale. And it's got people talking. People talking about this one. It, it definitely are. Definitely are. So let's let's go through this real quick. Phil, we'll start with you real quick. What was your initial re re reactions for this for this episode? Well, there was a lot of scenes with a lot of melodramatic music. There, there was, we had a we had a, a bunch of scenes. I don't want to get start negative first, but I mean, this was a good episode. I think, especially where we ended up at the end with Tabitha, was really cool and something a lot of people wanted to see. I thought this episode had a lot of little subtle funny moments, like Jim rolling his eyes when Victor went to go get his draw drawing out there, just because he can't help but disrespect every idea that Victor has. Yet he com yet he comes up with stupid crap all the time and he's he's all in on that but victor has a drawing he's like oh my god a freaking drawing uh i agree kind of i was watching your review tony the jade stuff i i maybe would have wanted a little bit more expansiveness in that cave but it it's just great to have jade on screen and correct me if i'm wrong we don't get a lot of jade and and uh boyd together in the scenes scenes a lot so it was good to get to see a scene with those two characters and i hope we see more of them in the next season i thought harold had some amazing monologues his f you to god scene was just great and uh and donna was shady tony she, she's johnny on the spot all the time but uh overall it was a good episode i think i like the last three better than this one but this was a good season finale hey man what you think yeah, um, very similar thoughts. I mean, I, I, you know, I wouldn't put this as like the best episode. I was still on a high from episode six. You know, my blood is your blood, mother effort. You know, like stuff like that was really getting me going. Um, and I will admit that like the first time I watched this episode, I wasn't blown away. But the second time I watched it, I definitely started to appreciate more stuff that not only did they answer, but other things that they were setting up for the future season. So um, I like what was going on with um, uh, uh, with Tabitha, of course, obviously with that big reveal at the end. Um, I like the fact that, you know, uh, um, we got Boyd going out there, still doing his quest, his adventures mm -hmm. out there in the woods. And for whatever reason, him and Ellis just keep on getting hurt. I don't know if it's a genetic thing, but they keep getting injured. I don't like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I definitely agree that like um, I wish Jade had gotten a little bit more because I feel like he's getting real close, but maybe that's probably why they're pulling away from him because uh, you don't want to answer too much. Um, but yeah, the whole bond also with Victor and Tabitha, absolutely loving that. Um, I like where they're going. And yeah, I, I just like the character development so far. Um, I know everybody's not going to get everything answered, but um, I'm satisfied with where we're going and I'm not ready to jump off the bandwagon. So um, I thought it was a pretty good episode and a good way to end the season. That's what's up again. You know, this is a call in live stream. You know, the number it's right on the crawl, crawl. You're right on the bottom. If you want to call in, the number is exactly, uh, what is it? Phil? It's 781-990-8509. 781-990-8509. We are simulcasting on E-Man's channel, I do believe, and the movie blog channel, I do believe too. So what up to all the people? Who are here from them? My man, Perp Minded, just joined us. We'll bring him in here right now. So he's up in the building, rocking with us. And yeah, well, hey, can you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you fine. You good? All right, good, good. good. All right, one second, Pete. Uh, and how'd you feel about this episode? Um, this episode did a lot for me because I'll be honest with you. Uh, I think with the sentiment, I had the same sentiment a lot of people was having was that the pacing in this season was like a little off. There was moving forward with the story that was pausing with the story there's a lot of tug and pull throughout the season um this season did a this last episode did a lot to make me look forward to season three it did all the things that i was hoping and screaming at the tv for these characters to do all season long boyd was talking to people oh my gosh finally boyd was talking to people um a lot of these characters finally started to move forward in their narrative their character arcs and it really did a lot to set up season three um, it was a very uneven season. I think like a lot of you guys said, there were like little spot episodes that were really excellent. And then there was some other episodes where, you know, we, we throw stuff at the TV, like, come on. <laughs> just. <you> know, uh... <laughs> I, I'm with you 100%. My man, Perp, what's going on, brother? What did you feel? How you doing? How you doing? Uh, how you um, 
I thought it was. I thought we were just talking about the the finale, like yeah. my overall thoughts. Okay, yeah, I thought it was solid. You know, it was different. Um, I think some people might had a, other ex- expectations, like expecting like a big death, but the way it kind of moved things along and it set up like season three stuff, uh, it has me intrigued. Uh, I think the ending definitely kind of like made me think, like, okay, this is kind of interesting. But I'm sure we're gonna get into that. I was I was fine with it. I, I myself, I like the episode. Again, I do think, and this is a season as a whole. And I'm not going to, y'all could jump in whenever you want. I'm not going to, you know, specific questions I'll say, but y'all jump. I don't like the way they're minimizing the monsters. I think that they're, you know, they're getting away from them a little too early. Now, I don't want it to be a walking dead situation where the monsters are no longer a threat and they start riding them like horses and shit and they got them for pets and stuff. I don't want to see that. You know what I mean? I, don't, I want the, but I do want the monsters to be in it because a couple of times this season, like, monsters should have got their ass. Like, when Ellis came out, and went into that hospital. That monster was on his ass. He should have got him. They reached out and got Father Cotri where they wanted to slice his neck. You know what I mean? When they were trying to get in the car the other time, too, with Randall and them, and Randall bounced, they should have got them then, too. So I think, to me, if I had one gripe about this episode, was that they didn't have any monsters in it. And in a whole, I don't like the way they used the monsters this season. How do, how do y'all feel about the way they used them? I mean, to be fair, they had a bigger apex predator out there, you know, and they've been teasing that the monsters that we see in the show are just the tip of the iceberg, right? Like it's or the tip of the spear, as Martin would say. So like whatever this worm cicada thing was, it was it was like the T-Rex in Jurassic Park. Like all the other dinosaurs didn't want to even come close, you know, once this thing came around. So you know, I thought it was interesting that they kind of focused on that. Um, I do have a theory uh, that I'm actually working on. It's a separate video about like what this thing actually was. But I think, you know, I'm with you in terms of like not really pushing the current monsters forward because I don't think we really have any real closure with them. Right. Like we there's still questions like like yo have they been human or like are they eating humans like like what is going on with them (laughs) you know at the end of the day um the only thing that we really found out was that you know the bile silver bullets or whatever didn't work that that's it that's all we know um so yeah i'm with you in terms of like you know we don't know enough and they probably could have had more coverage but you know they're trying to explore other crazier scarier things that are out there so that part has got me at least a little bit more intrigued. Yeah. I mean, the scariest thing in this episode was we're all going to die. Reggie sneak <laughs> up the, the dude's throat. And he's like, yeah, you're going to die soon. Anyway, suddenly he turns into like this creepy serial killer. And he's like, come on. And then he shoots Boyd has a clear shot and shoots him in the shoulder. Like, again, I don't want to see Boyd die, but like you're, you're aiming that much and you still hit him in the shoulder. And it's bird shot. He's shooting him with. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, yeah. all you got to do yeah. is aim yeah. this in a mass and it's going to catch yeah. this dude. You catch him with one thing in the shoulder. That's it. And then I, I always liked you as he slowly walks towards him again. I don't know. Re- Reggie wasn't my favorite, but he's the apex predator that you're talking about. Right. You man. Reggie was that apex. <laughs> he's the one to worry. I guess about. he's a different type of apex predator. It could, it could be a scenario where it's just like different waves of monsters where, you know, Martin said like there's worse things out. So that cicada thing could just be another wave yeah. and, you know, eventually like you'll have them all kind of come back maybe i don't think the cicadas are fully gone maybe they're just like i said like i I think there's a something bigger out there that they gotta worry about because i don't think it's just all gonna be calm and cool and stuff it's it's just gonna keep getting worse and worse to to see what they can they can kind of deal with and whatnot so yeah Yeah. what's but there's a few levels of threats right there's like uh we've seen them foreshadow and tease through all of Victor's drawings and Eloise's drawings. Mm-hmm. There's drawings yep. throughout the show. Yep. Like we've seen like the spiders. We've seen what looks like a boogeyman. We've seen like, you know, some creatures that look like the ring rays from the Lord of the Rings and the <laughs> yeah. drawings. I don't know. I don't know what they are. If they're just bad interpretations from children, but they are bigger threats out there. They're things that we know that we see um see foreshadowed. I think there was a flood. You know, we've got the Civil War zombies that, that haunt jade in his dreams so 
there's definitely tiers of monsters out there. Um, I like that they're teasing that they're going to escalate. It feels like every every once in a while they tease they're going to escalate. When Boyd and Sarah got dragged in the forest, they tease that they're going to escalate. Um, the banging in underneath the RV, they're teasing like, yo, things is going to get crazy. So I'm really looking forward to how they're doing a lot of setup, even if it's frustrating me with the pacing. Yeah, And something or someone is projecting because it's obviously not real abby someone is someone is speaking through her and i don't think it's the worms that we're speaking it's yeah. it has to do with the uh whoever's in charge or whatever maybe it's the boy in white maybe it's uh, that that's my working thing at the moment uh or as we were talking about a couple of days ago tony like the boy, mm -hmm. boy, boy in white evil maybe maybe <laughs> uh jacob and the man in black all in one with the boy in white. <laughs> Uh, evil. Evil. I mean, he had that evil Jamie Lannister look on his face. <laughs> he pushed uh, pushed the boy out the window. Spoiler alert for Game of Thrones, I guess. <laughs> yeah. so, so let's take this super chat from Michael Parker. Thank you so much. It says, salute to the chat, the panel. I love season two, but too many loose ends left unclipped. The man, number one, was the man in the picture. Number two, explanation for the children. Number three, the man on the radio. Number four, explanation of Martin. I, I agree. I just don't think you're going to get I, I thought that most likely you would get some of the stuff they dealt with last year, but you they weren't gonna do anything about the stuff they brought up this year. And they're gonna, you know, push things back, you know, every everything. That's what I thought about that. About the loose ends this man's talking about. Did y'all have a problem with any loose ends and you wish they would have covered something a little bit better? Um, not really. Uh you know, I, I get it. Like, it could be frustrating, but it's even what Jade was kind of talking about in the beginning of this episode, where it's like you're starting in the middle of the story. You don't know how it began or where it's going to go at the end. Um, And I think that that's an interesting way to kind of tell the story, because I'd be kind of more pissed off if they, like, completely just told us straight up, like, exactly, because then you can kind of piece things together. It kind of makes it more interesting as it just like slowly gets revealed we know just as much information as the characters we see on screen so i don't see it as a for me personally as a huge issue but i can understand why some people would be frustrated by that yeah no i i agree with that i mean sometimes we have to be careful with what uh we wish for you know <laughs> like if you get too many things answered it might not make it as intriguing you know or you might just be like oh okay that was it. Well, I'm done. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, so it, it's you just got to think about the storytelling. And, you know, like I understand like the concerns with the pacing, because I also had those issues. But I also understand that they're trying to build up characters sometimes or they're trying to do some world building or they're trying to push a plot forward. So, you know, there's a lot of juggling going on here. And, you know, the loose threads, the, the most we can really hope for is that eventually they will answer them. I'd be more frustrated if they never answer them at all versus, well, y'all just taking your time. Like, I'll wait for good quality. So if, if they're going to answer them later, I'm cool with that. Y'all think it's like uh, it has something to do with it being weekly released? You think it would be a different kind of scenario if this was something like you could put out all the episodes and people could binge it? Because it definitely seems like it's, I don't know, I think people would, enjoy it more if you could binge it maybe yeah but, I mean, the thing is this with purpose this is the way I, the way i look at it if you want to become like a, an event television show you right. can't do it every week so say something like the witcher comes out on netflix that first week it comes out it's hot by the second it's done everyone's oh, seen it yep. and that's it so now if you do it weekly you got 10 full weeks to people and that's what you're looking for like a game of thrones yeah. show you're looking for a water cooler show, you know what I mean? That yep. like you could stretch out for your network for two months over two months, and I think you get more out of your buck that way, and it makes a show more popular than if you're not Stranger Things is a phenomenon, no doubt about it. But imagine if Stranger Things was dropping week to week to week, how much bigger it would be, you know what I mean? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And, and Tony, you mentioned uh, like The Witcher, but and even with The Witcher, it has a built in audience. Like, take a show like The Bear that just came out this past week. Phenomenal. You know, a phenomenal show. This second season, episode six, I think it was, the Christmas episode, if people watch that, was the most single most tense hour of television I've ever watched in my life. 
horribly amazing, great show beginning to end. No one talks about it. No one's going to talk about it. If that show came out week to week, people might talk about it. A show like From on a channel or a, a streaming service like Epics to start and now MGM, it's not profile enough that if it just dropped, it would be, it would just disappear. It, it wouldn't, it probably wouldn't get three or four seasons. I think week to week helps it, but I do agree yeah. with you per, perp that, uh, that there's something about the way you watch something. Like I binge watch something like lost or people that binge watch game of Thrones. They don't have right. a problem with the ending. Right. It usually some people do, but for the most part, you don't, when you binge something week to week, there's not that anticipation of waiting to need something every week. So I think this show does deal with a lot of, uh, I call it post-traumatic loss disorder where people are <laughs> projecting onto this show, that mystery box show of your pick right here didn't pay off. So this show isn't going to pay off too. Uh, so I think it's dealing with a lot of that and that you get that more week to week. Okay. Yeah, I just I just think it's like it, it's a little like I, I guess it's depending on the person too. Cause like me, I prefer to binge if I can. But also like I'm not opposed to weekly. I just like you gotta kinda make it worth it like every week, you know, to keep that mm -hmm. to keep that engagement and stuff. And because there's plenty of weekly shows that just like they wait till like the last two episodes <laughs> on like Disney Plus series and stuff like that. But you know, that's I guess it's it's just subjective at the end of the day. So no, the, right, let me take a couple of super chats real quick. Vanessa says, Thank you for the dream team discussion. Season two finale wasn't what I was expecting. Season one was the scariest, best on TV. I agree, I think season one was better than season two, but I, they, they, I don't think they've gone too far off the rails where it's not watchable or anything like that. I think they and everything else. And Mac and uh, Maximus uh, said, uh, Hi, Tony Phil. Uh, the doc and nurse I mentioned pre-episode 10, despite the fact that I did not have any access, but the trailer impl implemented kids were in the tunnel with significant happenings in the lighthouse. Is that all that's there? I, mean, I think he sent another one, too. Uh, to continue on, another super chat. Uh, what I believe is that the writers concluded season two with as many possibilities. Everything is on the table for future seasons even if Tab isn't entirely out. So I would say that I think they know where they I don't think they open booked it where they can just change it up. E Man, what do you think? You think that they have this thing mapped out already or you think they're just going season by season? Oh, no. I mean, um, I've listened to, um, you know, John mm -hmm. and, and Jeff talk in different capacities and they've said multiple times, like, yo, we've got this mapped out. We know how this all mm -hmm. ends. Um, but what I appreciated the most about what they said was that um, uh, not only do they know how this is mapped out, some of it does depend on, you know, are you actually, gonna get, uh, you know, going to get greenlit? So let's say, for example, if they say uh, MGM gives them a season three and MGM's like, look, this is your last season. They said, like, yo, we know how to end it in three seasons if they have to. But at the same time, if they can go to five seasons, they know how to tell that story yeah. um, at, you know, at the same rate. But what I absolutely loved is the fact that unlike Lost, because y'all know some of them worked on Lost or whatever, uh, the studios used to come to them and be like, look, can we have like 45 episodes in a year? <laughs> you know, can we stretch this out as much as possible? And what I liked is the creative team on From was like, we don't want to do that. We don't want to just milk it just for the sake of milking it, you know, like Walking Dead was doing right now. So rather that they're like, yo, we got to tell a complete story. We clearly want to talk about the characters and what paths they're taking. But at the end of the day, we know that this thing has a beginning, middle and an end. And to me, that's usually the sign of a great story and show when you actually know where you want to go and you're not just trying to, you know, stretch it out just for the sake of dollars and views. No doubt. All right. So, Ant, let me ask you this question. So let's say... Let's say they, they had, would you rather them, let's say they had a plan for five seasons of this show. Mm -hmm. Would you rather them end it in five seasons? But let's say the studio said, listen, we want two more seasons out of you. Would you rather them stretch that or would you rather them just end it in the five seasons? Nah, end it in the five seasons. And if they need to, do spinoffs. You know, like I like how we're seeing that kind of storytelling with the quiet place. You know, if they wanted to end the quiet place on part two, they could. If they wanted to end it on part one, they could. 
but they have a new upcoming in spinoff with Lupita Nyong'o taking on as the lead character. It's another way to like explore this world from a different lens, from a different angle with a new cast. This like from has so much potential in it with the just the concept, the world building, the things that they've introduced at this point. Um, I know me and E-Man, we talk about this all the time. And one thing that we've talked about is like, how do we know that this is the only town? Like, you know, it could really go out there that there could be other towns somewhere in this forest where other people are going through the same thing. Um, you know, I notice like little weird things when I'm watching the show. I notice that there's train tracks that go nowhere. You know, there's telephone wires that go nowhere. And I'm like, you know, maybe this is them hinting at the, or at least leaving the breadcrumbs for them to potentially do world building and building and spinoffs and go in other directions. So as far as what's going on with the Matthews, what's going on with Boyd, what's going on in Colleen House, wrap it up. Let's, let, like, I need this. <laughs> like, I can't, you can't be playing with my feelings like this. So there's already, I already have a bunch of my friends hitting me up every day. Like, yo, this isn't going to end like Lost, right? Like, come on. Don't, or, or worse yet, the dome. Under the dome. Yeah, the dome. Know, yeah. Mm, that was sad. Mm. It was a good show when it first started. <laughs> yeah, we can never talk about the monarch. We can never talk about men named Harvey. We can't. We there's so many things about that show and Wayward Pine. You know those those type of shows where they do this to us. You know they know that we're addicted to solving clues. They know that we're addicted to these like almost like mystery within a mystery type stuff. I, I need something that's complete and planned out. I hear you. All right, let's take the super chat. Emily Siegel says, does anyone else think it's weird that there's a lighthouse in the middle of a landlocked town and Tabitha did not see any large bodies of water from the top of the tower? It must mean something. So, all right, we'll, 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 we'll jump all over the place then, I guess. What what do y'all think? Let's go, go through the ending scene with Tabitha. That's obviously the, the, uh, the scene that most people... What did you think about the scene? And if you can... Try to answer some of this lady's questions right here. Do you think it's weird that, oh, did you notice that the lighthouse was in a landlocked town and there didn't seem to be any any water out there? I mean, when she looked out the window, it looked like there was a little bit of water out there and right in front of her. But what did y'all think about that, the ending? Anybody can jump in. The ending or the fact that there's a lighthouse? Let's go through the lighthouse first, the lighthouse in the landlocked town. From the I'll put it to you like this. Uh, if you go back and pay attention to them drawings, I think that there's a very good reason why there's a lighthouse. I'm not going to spill it because I want people to go back and watch. But go <laughs> look at the drawings. There's a lot of water. There's a lot of water. I'm just going to throw that out there. So I don't <laughs> think it's all that strange. I think that could be something they're teasing in the future. Um, but as for uh, where Tabitha is now, I think she is in the real world right now. I think she's escaped. I think she's out in, I don't know, what was it? Uh St. Anthony's Hospital or whatever, like wherever that's located, Chicago, Ohio, whatever it is, um, you know, and uh, it's it's given Lost vibes again. I haven't even finished Lost. Like I just started it and like I've seen almost 15 different connections in the first 12 episodes and I already had some spoilers for it anyway. So this is sounding very Lost-ish all over again. You see the dog run up to somebody. You're like, oh, yeah, the fuck lost. Yeah. And, yes. Yes. St. Yes. Anthony's Hospital, Dr. Brody. Uh, I'm Tabitha. I also think Tabitha somehow managed to find her way out into the real world. I know somebody said in the chat, I was just looking at comments quickly. Luke, I didn't really look into this, that uh, that the symbol was somewhere in the hospital, maybe. Yeah, on the computer screen. It was okay, so that that could definitely change it. That makes that gives me a very Dharma initiative kind of vibe, uh, as well. So maybe it's some, as Tony was saying in his video, it's it's uh, the, the other people, it's the people running it uh, that that caught her. But I, I tend to think she's in the real world. But it was, a, I thought it was a really good ending, though. I mean, if we listen to what Martin said, and we take that into account then we can say that Tabitha, she, she says, when you go through the weirwood tree, that's when they catch you, right? She went through the, the far away tree, far away with tree, Jesus. The far away tree, that's when they catch you. And she went through it. And I think she's been caught. That's when they caught her. They caught her there. Again, and, and also, we don't know what happened to Martin because now that we've seen everything that happened in the show and we've seen the other bodies that were, that were chained up to that wall, right? And we've seen that their real body wasn't there was somewhere else. Where was Martin's real body when he was talking to Boy? I don't I don't think Martin's a reliable source. 
Definitely not a reliable narrator. <laughs> meaning, meaning, meaning what? That, that the stuff I, I'm just saying, I would not trust. I, I was there at first. Like, when I first, you know, was watching and everything. But after that last episode, I'm, I would not trust anything Martin said. Anything. Well, you, you know, we, well, I think we have to we have to go with the the, the tip of the spear situation, right? Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We, you we can't you can take that because it's that was obvious, right? Like yeah. the cicadas and all that they they were worse than the monsters, but I'm I I have a lot of reason to believe that Martin was not what he presented himself to be. Do you, do you think he, he, like so as as we seen, right? We seen with the other people that were there that they were somewhere else screaming, but their image was transported into that place. Mm -hmm. Do we think that was going on with Martin too, that he was somewhere else, but he was chained to the wall just like that? Or do you think that was his physical body? That, that, that was actually something, I think, I forget what it's called, but it was one of those um, physics things that Jade <laughs> was talking about. I don't think it was Schrodinger, uh, Schrodinger's box or whatever with the cat. Uh -huh. um, but it was one of those type of physics type of things where basically you could have two things happening at the same time, but be in two different realities or whatever. So, I mean, I'm not a physics teacher. Yeah, at all, I think that, is, that is the cat. You know, right. yeah, the Schrodinger's cat. cat. So cat right. I think that's pretty much what was happening where we didn't know if they were alive, if they were dead, but they were alive at the same time or something. I don't know. Physics. Nice. I think with Tabitha, though, I don't necessarily think she's in the real world because the whole story doesn't really add up that, like, a bunch of hikers found her on a trail or something like that. Because then, where's the RV? Where's her family? Or, like, maybe this is like some type of flashback or vision or something like that. It, it's very, it, I, I'd be kind of, uh, I don't, because I don't know what she would do if she is in the real world. Like, what, how would you be able to help? Um, help other people kind of wake up and stuff so it, it could possibly just be another like kind of reality or something like that at, at the same time too could it and be a quantum it, leap situation where she's in someone else's body maybe is she in maybe her own body? <laughs> obviously maybe this do that. it's definitely possible but but also with uh martin though um maybe that he's that he's the entity that um Sarah was talking about because Sarah was saying like, "Oh, he's la uh, it's laughing at you, or whatever." Like, because we haven't mm -hmm. seen that thing yet. So, I and the, the locust, though. and we keep talking, we keep seeing like um his wife, and we see uh Tom the bartender and stuff like that. Maybe that's that entity, like, and he's he's able to kind of use people that have died or something like that to kind of manipulate people. Because I was like, why would Jade go into those caves? You know, what I'm saying this. It seemed well, like a trap at the time. Jade went in there because that was his moral conscience talking mm -hmm. to him. You know, like like it was the same thing with uh Boyd and uh Father Cotri, right? Mm -hmm. Like okay, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. not really Father Cotri, but that was really Boyd's psychic, you know, his consciousness just manifested mm -hmm. as Cotri because he wasn't giving him new information, he was just yeah. bouncing off ideas mm -hmm. to himself to talk himself into whatever he wanted to do. And that was kind of like what happened with Tom and Jade, you know, like, it, I mean, if you really look at that conversation, Tom right. is really just echoing what Jade already he, believed. He's using Jade dialogue, even the exactly. words he's using and the, in the theories he's explaining, it's almost like he's yeah. reading dialogue off of Jade's. And exactly. it, you get the best line. And I think in this whole episode was like from Jade, he's like, you're dead, right? He goes, yeah, he's all right. <laughs> we're on the same page. <laughs> keep that same energy with all of the visions that he has next time he see christopher be just as smooth with it be like hey man can we talk <laughs> you know something all right uh, uh movie blog man uh how did you take that last scene with with tabitha what, what, let's let's what's this go through that let's just get that done and then we'll take these super chats i'll take them all Again, call in seven eight. Yeah, we, we got a bunch of voicemails to get to. We gotta, we're gonna that. go through the voicemails and everything. Probably, we probably want this to do a recap. We'll yeah, no, no, we'll just go all over the place with it today. And so, so no, no, no structure. All right, so, so, my man, how'd you feel about the last scene with Tabitha? The last scene with Tabitha is what like really locked me in to be down for season three. Um, I think some of you guys probably caught on a couple more things than I did. I didn't really see the uh, symbol on the computer screen, but I'm, I'm gonna go back and look for that. But I have been combing through like other people's theories. Of, there's a lot of people who have theories that 
maybe when Tabitha went through the window of the lighthouse that she may have traveled back in time or something. One thing that was teased earlier in the season that kind of got, you know, I ain't going to say it's been forgotten, but we still need to understand um, Jim's medical bracelet, right? Jim's medical bracelet was found in Mrs. Lou's closet with the storage supplies. So one thing that we all know, we saw that um, Victor's mother had a similar bracelet. I remember you showing that on your last live stream that Victor's mother had the similar uh, medical bracelet around her wrist that we're trying to understand how did she get it. Some people have that theory that maybe Tabitha might have time traveled and something that she does when she goes into the real world um, allows her to interact with Victor's mother and hand them this bracelet, hand her this bracelet. So I've been really just trying to absorb and it's like, you know, it, my mind goes in a million different places. I still got to process a lot of the clues that were dropped in this episode to really firm out what my theory is going to be or what I'm going to believe in. But I'm really, really excited by all the potential that they set up with this one scene. Yeah, I, I, I like the scene. I think that me personally, I think that they bagged her up. I just seen the movie and I forgot what it was or a TV show where it was a whole fake. They paralyzed the guy with some drugs and they were faking like he was locked up in the room. And it was all this a charade. They had actors in there playing like they were doctors trying to get information out of him. I think it's a situation like that. I, I just. I don't see how escape the guy pushing you out of the window and all of a sudden you escape. I just can't see it being that simple. You know what I mean? I, I think it has to be more to it uh, going going on there than just that. Let me take some of these super chats. We got a bunch here. Uh, Liz Johnson. So I just wanted to say thanks to all the hard work you put into this. You guys make this experience so much better. It's all about y'all. Thank y'all for, for coming to all of our channels, showing us some love watching the videos it really helps liking the videos all that really helps a lot for everybody's channel let me i know there's more i'm trying to get to them didn't they used to have like a thing where you can just see the super chats on the side for what happened uh, they got rid of it under start or starred yeah i don't i don't have that oh starred my bad yes yep. there it is let's that's better all right let's go through this is easier for me to go through let's go through them real quick day p less two uh, so if you got left well, one question, you said the, this is the first time we've heard the boy in white speak audibly instead of telepathically. You're correct, and it's the first time we've seen the boy in white actually lay hands on people. So, does that mean the boy in white is a physical being? So, people want, and I always thought he was because when he was outside, his hair got wet, you know. And that, so, and when people were like, Oh, he's just trying to con you, I was like, His hair is wet, he's got to be a physical being, or his hair wouldn't be wet, and you know what I mean. Uh, dealing with the boy in white and everything, I, I, me personally, and that's what I'm thinking. I think it's they're all the fucking boy in white. Because you hear Sarah say she don't think the boy in white is a is a a, a boy. He right. thinks you know she says specifically, I don't think he's a boy. Angel, that's just not a throwaway line. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking they all can. The boy in white may be able to change forms. Maybe the boy in white's coming to, to boy as 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 his wife. Maybe the boy in white is is hanging out there being Martin at that particular time. Maybe it's this boy in white bop, bopping around the whole thing, fucking with everybody and everything else. Lisa Randall wants to give you a shout out. He with a big super chat right here. And he, she says, shout out to E-Man and your funny one lions, Anthony, and of course, Tony Teflon. My theory, theory maybe the boy in white pushed Tabitha into the past so that she discovers how the town becomes from, and that's how her bracelet was found. And died. So let's go. She doesn't have the bracelet on her now, so I don't know. But well, she does. It's, it's, she, we don't know if she has it on her. We know she she looked at him. We don't know if it's on a physical being right there. All right, let's go through with the boy in white real quick. Do y'all think the boy in white's good or you think he's bad? I think, I think it's bad. like somewhere in the middle because I think he'll do certain things like where he says Tabitha it tells Tabitha like I'm sorry, but I got to do this. And like, why would he say that? And I like uh, what you said, Tony, about um, you know, maybe that boy in white is changing forms. Because it's like it's like what Boyd was talking to uh, Abby. He was saying like, so he just whatever's out here is just letting you have a conversation with us, like having a conversation and all this. And it, it that's that's really interesting. But I think he kind of plays both a little bit of both sides and stuff. He, he tries to help when he can, um, but it's it's still I, I still wouldn't trust him fully. But I, I think it's definitely a, a scenario or a case where he's just. Playing both sides, you we walk in the line, perp. You walk in the <laughs> line right here. You want you want a fence with this one right there. 
Yeah. He's definitely yeah. on the fence. E, e man, what are you thinking about the boy? Nah, I, listen, I think he's good. Um, it you know, I, I can't get with the whole walking the line thing only because it just it would be more confusing. Like, why? Like, what's the point? You know. Um, but I do think that you know, based off of what we've heard, at least from Sarah, because Sarah said that, like, yo, he's trapped here just like the rest of us, you know. Um, and the fact is, like, also what Donna was telling Jim on different occasions were, or, or even Randall, when he was talking to Jim, he was like, look, if these entities, these voices and other beings or whatever, if they really wanted to help, wouldn't they do more? And so far, the boy in white is the only one that's really been doing more and helping Victor and Julie escape, helping Sarah and Boyd escape. Like, he's actually done more good, and I don't know of any actual bad that he's done to make him questionable i mean he said i'm sorry this is the only way we don't know what that means just because he pushed her doesn't mean that that's a bad thing yeah she's hurt but if you were to tell me you just gotta push me so i can get out of that town push me push me all day <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'll take that leap so i think he's way more good than bad all right but, but wasn't he the one who who was singing that home to elgin that's what he said right the boy in white he did and I, i'm that, glad you mentioned right? that because i was just thinking that and i was thinking about my i was thinking about it like what was the purpose of that but i think if he is good if you look and listen to the actual lyrics he did give them a way to stop the melody he gave them a way like he told them you have to stop the melody like through this rhyme so without him saying that would they have been able to stop all the torture and stuff. Yeah, Boyd, Boyd did, did need that information to know that they're coming after three people, right? And uh, you needed to crush and destroy that music box, like the like the uh, copier and office space. It was like a slow motion, <laughs> like crush that thing, beat it down. I think the boy in white seems to be doing so far good things but we don't know he's he's obviously working for his own agenda but i think that agenda is getting out of there and if helping people helps that happen he achieves that so i guess i'm walking that line a little bit i think the boy and what will do anything to stop the cycle and definitely isn't trying to hurt people i think the only evil things you could look at to say that he maybe did was send boyd to the torture chamber to deal with uh, the worms and meet martin uh and and send sarah to a different situation if he has any control over the faraway trees which we don't know uh that because that wasn't the bottle was it the bottle tree that he no they didn't go through the bottle tree it no. wasn't oh, okay they so, came across a bottle tree but yes but they I don't didn't know if that was the same one or not. So okay, yeah. so, so it was completely random in that situation. So, and the only other evil thing the boy in white did was get the evil look on his face before he pushed Tabitha. But maybe he just had to gain his strength. I know when I he, maybe that's just his uh you know his like game face. I know sometimes if I'm playing play, exerting myself athletically, I got to get that growl on my face. So maybe that maybe it wasn't evil. He was just you know gathering his strength to be able to push Tabitha as far as she needs to go. I mean, you could look at the things he's done and say, you know, they do seem good. But what if they were bad? This didn't work out the way he wanted them to work out. Mm -hmm. And what do you what do you think? He's boy in white. He's good. No, I don't bad. think he's I don't think he's evil. I think he's limited in the cap in his capabilities. I don't think he has the um, capability to speak to people directly whenever he wants to. I don't think he has the ability to just be seen by anybody whenever he wants to. Um, they do give us some visual clues. I, I don't want to spoil all all the things that I've been observing because i do have my own little theory i am putting together but one big clue that i've noticed is that you know the boy in white and the uncooey kids you know they look like they get dressed by the same tailor like there's a lot there that i think that we can look at and see that there's some similarities between them to help us put together our final theories but um as far as him being evil no i think he's just doing what he can where he can um giving people clues you know I know I got really freaked out when he spoke to Tabitha, but I think that was probably the only place where he could speak to her directly and then just shoved out. Yeah, I mean, he does have the same tail as those clothes, but he knows how to use bleach because his clothes is pristine. <laughs> and these little kids are dirty little motherfuckers right here. Yeah. Running around dirty and stuff, you know, and all that. So, I, I, you know, I can't see him being good. I think the, the white, the boy in white, is cliche is just 
too overwhelmingly the the boy in white is the good guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think they threw that in your face with that too much, trying to tell you that there's something else going on with this boy in white. I think that when they said to Sarah, and I and I and I think that like so there's the way I look at it is like there's three there's the monsters that were chasing them. Then we have then we have uh we have uh the, the, the people in the town and then we have the people that are you know holding the spear and then we have i think a, a different group of people and i think that different group of people are the ones who said they were captured they're captured by those people two are the ones that are talking to sarah and those people that were talking to sarah when they said kill the boy i believe they were talking about boy and white because there's no other boy that any other person in this show has been referred to as a boy and i think they're telling her hey kill the boy in white and we can go home. And she got messed up and thought it meant was Ethan for Ethan, but not the boy in white. But I think when it said kill the boy, I think they meant kill the boy in white and you can all go home. I think this is all ran by him and, and stuff like that. That's my opinion, whether I'm right or wrong, but that, that's what I think is going on with him. Uh you have to save something if you want about that. But uh, uh, uh thank you for the super chat. Don't even worry about it. And uh, he says, I don't trust the boy in white. Sorry, the boy in white could have could have told Victor to come up to the lighthouse so I could push you to freedom. <laughs> yeah, he, he could have pushed the if that's the case, push everyone out that motherfucking yeah. window. One at a time. This is this the, everyone just go up like a conga line up that motherfucker and start pushing people out and stuff. You know, we Shuffling got a John over, Malkovich. Yeah, we got over 780 people watching us right now. Hit that thumbs up for your boys up in here. You know what I'm saying? We we doing our thing up in here. And representing for y'all, the fans and everything else. Uh, Phil, you want to take a phone call real quick? Yeah, here we go. This is from area code 910. What's going on, Don and uh, Theo? What's going on with y'all? This is Fred Grace out of Southern North Carolina. I'm just calling in with a theory. See what y'all guys think. Um, I just re- been rewatching a couple of the episodes. And um, what if Martin was the main villain? is the main bad guy that we're missing. Um, I know I watched that last episode, and you know uh, Sarah kept mentioning that uh, that it was laughing at boys. And what if Martin was the main creature and uh, ben Linus. he tricked boys into taking the worm until putting it out to the town because he knew boys would try to help and uh, play a part in everything. Because you notice he kept saying he'd never seen um so kind of eyes in a long time, and then we was trying to figure out how he he got the rope down there. But what if he threw it down the boy and then act like he was chained up? Um, and try to mislead boy a little bit. So uh, just tell me what y'all guys think. All right, we'll go we'll go go around the panel. Uh, movie. Uh, I keep saying movie book. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, and, <laughs> What, 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 what do you Only. think? About, <laughs> what, what do you think about that, Martin? Everything, Martin, up to some no good and shit. Did he use his fucking toenails to throw that rope down? <laughs> Is that you know? People have been pointing that out since that scene happened about like how did how did he throw the rope? How did he throw the rope? And the you know that caller did have a good point in the things that the creature was saying. He was like, you know, it was good to touch your arm. Only thing that touched Boyd's arm was Martin. Um, was he talking but, about him or was he talking about he was talking about Kenny? Kenny. Was he talking about Kenny? I thought he was yeah. said, I thought she said the the creature is laughing at you and it was so happy when it touched your arm. I think Kenny. she turned to Kenny and when she Cause said because Kenny grabbed his arm quick. He yeah. was like, Oh my god. Yeah, it was Kenny. Oh, yeah, with the cicada. I immediately I immediately thought about when Boyd got the worms in his arm because Boyd is the one that brought the worms back and then they gestated in Smiley's body and then they came out as cicadas. So when I heard that, I didn't think Kenny. I thought they were talking about Boyd. I mean, the camera panned to Kenny and he grabbed his arm. So it was Kenny. Okay. Well, I, I took that completely differently. Um, when that creature, when, that, when they had that scene, I absolutely thought it was about talking about laughing at Boyd. Laughing at Boyd, yes, I think that's the case. But... When he said reach out and touch you, I think she turned her head, she looked at Kenny, and then Kenny grabbed his arm. So I think that one line was meant specifically for Kenny saying, you know, 
he's talking about this for you, boy. And he's saying, ha ha, I love to touch your arm. Yeah. And then I think he had a little Frodo pain for a second, like from the, uh, you know, like, oh, I feel the, the, Phantom ring. Pain. Yeah, the ring is near me. Oh, like there was a moment where I think Kenny felt something. But I, uh, but Tony, I definitely for a second thought that that was referred to to a boy that was on the second watch through that I realized that I saw like the camera shift over to, to Kenny. But like the first time when I was sort of taking notes with my head down, I, I, I assumed she, they were talking about, um, talking about, talking about Boyd as well, but, but they do flash over to Kenny and he gets the, uh, the, the Frodo look on his face for a second. Yeah. So, uh, any, uh, uh well, about Martin, Martin, Martin being the evil guy. Yeah. yeah Martin being evil. Martin being evil, like it, it, he could be a mastermind. He could definitely be a mastermind. We still don't know who threw down the rope. Um, we still don't know too much about him except some little details that he gave us. He gave, he told us what town he was from, and he did tell us that he was in the Marines. Mm -hmm. Um, he could be part of the group because he, you know, a lot of people was uh, uh, with Jim's theory of them being observed, him quoting things that. He observed, like, you know, do you think Abby was right? And he started name dropping details about the town himself. I, I could see that being like the big reveal in the end, kind of like um, the squid game with the old man. I could definitely see them pulling a squid game right here, but it, I need a little bit more to support that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I feel I, I, I don't trust that dirty, skinny fuck. I, 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 I but I do believe <laughs> what, 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 what he was saying. Like, I think that he was. And I thought Boyd should have really asked him some questions. Like, well, you've been here this long. Boyd shut him up. Yeah, Boyd he kept, he kept like, shutting him up. Boyd got a bad he, habit of doing that. Like, Every time somebody got some info, uh, let, let's change the subject. Like, we don't have to talk, we don't right. talk about this right, right. now. Right. <laughs> like, boy, he, boy, he better ask that boy some questions. But, God, but it wouldn't make sense for it to be like this, this kind of uh, because we like this one doesn't feed off your fear if you're based on hope. Like once you do kind of like feel like the hope and get out of here, you know, it's it's there, there, there could be something you're, you're, to you're, that. You're, you're breaking up really bad. It's, you didn't really get what you were saying right there. Oh, oh yeah, you, you're still you're still breaking up. Maybe you could check your, your connection, check your audio. Because you're breaking up pretty bad, it's hard to hear. You're coming in robotic right now, but uh, try, try, try to get that straightened out a little bit, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll get back to you on on that question and everything else. Uh, Phil, we, you you answered what, what, what you did. Mar I mean, yeah, he, I mean, Mar Martin is he, like, he, 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 I mean, Martin could very possibly be a projection of some sorts. I think it's interesting that Martin had a his consciousness; he was awake, but when we saw. Uh, Julie and Randall and Mari in the same position. They were sort of eyes rolled unconscious. I guess he had been there long enough to be awake at some points, but I guess yeah. where the music wasn't playing. Uh -huh. uh, but I don't know. I don't know if we're going to see Martin again, but I did at the time get some Ben Linus vibes from him where he could be ham and egg in it for a situation, pretending to be a prisoner or pretending that in getting in the right place at the right time. But I think I'm projecting there. I think Martin was what was what he seemed to be. What if he's the Duck Dynasty dude for real? Because you know what I mean? Because the Duck Dynasty dude with the gun. What if he looked like that? Because he's, I, I, I'm just saying, I don't think that's a throwaway that, that we had Julie in the bed, but she was strapped to the wall. You know, we had all of them in different spots, but they were all on the wall. So I have to assume that the same thing was happening with Martin that, he was somewhere else, even though Boyd was able to see him strapped to the wall. That he had to be, I'm not saying in bed, but somewhere else, something had to happen to him to get to that point, I would think. I think that's the way they showed everybody else. So is he really dead or did he just get cured like they got cured? Now he's off in his physical body somewhere. They got there. They were there when they were inhabited by the cicadas right like they were there yeah. and then their eyes were rolled over but martin was like coherent he was speaking he was having conversation yep. with Boyd. he didn't seem to exhibit the same symptoms as exactly you know, the other three um that that's what kind of makes me lean a little bit more into what you know asking what was he really you know was he really the you know the, the evil villain behind the scenes and he's just playing 
Um, I think that the fact that he was willing to give some information about his background to Boyd is probably going to be something that pays out, uh, plays out a little bit further. You know, they keep giving us little clues about how potentially the things or the people that people knew in their lives before they came to Frumville will play out. Um, I think it was Julie and um, that dude she was with, right? Like the, their names made up the name of the soldier that he knew back when he was in Marines. Uh, uh, Smuckers or whatever. Kelly, Kelly or whatever. Yeah. yeah, Brian Kelly or something Brian like Kelly. that. Yeah, so like they're given like little clues that like, you know, there there is going to be something that's being built up towards their history in the Marines that's going to tie into this. There's so many times that we're seeing soldiers, armed forces, people who are fighting for, you know, whatever causes for their country coming up. Um, I, I think that they're going to use that as a big payoff later down the road, but I don't I don't think he's like I, he he could he could be the evil villain after when it's all said and done. It's def it's definitely possible. It could be the Squid Game type situation. Sonic, your boy, has the most important question. The real mystery I want to know is what's in Donna's pockets. She's got the teleporting <laughs> button. She she can sit in the yeah, right man, place. Them hands, is glued to them. them hands is glued to them pockets, boy. They glued to them pockets. So she, with, so she has an Aunt May speech on lockdown. Where in every spot she wants to go, Boyd. You know, yeah, I, I, I really think that the boy in white could be impersonating these people, man. I really do. I, I really think it could be him projecting himself as these people. I, do I sound really good, good now? So, yeah, you sound good. That's, that's much better. Perfect. That's possible. I, I've been wondering about doppelgangers a little bit. Like um, one thing that stood out to me is Elgin. You know, he walks around with this uh, shirt with a raven or something on it. And you know, for the most part, he's in that same outfit. It's, 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 it's not a raven, that bird. It's that bird, it's that black bird with the red wings. I see it every day. Ever since I seen the shirt, I go outside, I see that fucking bird every every day. <laughs> I've never noticed him before. It's a black bird with red wings. I forgot little red spots on its wings, upper wings. Uh forgot the name of it, but it, but it, I know that it's not a raven that's on the shirt, it's that that bird. There was uh, like one time though, like he had on a different outfit. It was only in one scene and one episode. I, I've been saying Elgin is sus for a while. My man is sus. I mean, my uh -oh. man don't bathe either. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, he did <laughs> try. He tried, man. Only He's with his clothes on. Only, only with clothes on at that. Like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I asked him when he came on the chat. That's the first thing. The first thing when he came on the chat. I was like, dude, why are you up in the bathtub with a potato sack on? <laughs> you rocking the bundle bag like, like you in this, you know, this is the Patriot times and stuff. You ain't, ain't got to rock no bundle bag. <laughs> but there was one scene where he changed his clothes. It was like this one scene. It was just once he was talking to um Julie. And for no reason, for no reason, he decided to tell Julie, oh, yeah, Boyd killed a monster. But if you notice in that scene, he's not wearing the same shirt. He's wearing something else. And that was the only time I ever noticed it. I don't really pay attention to people's clothes like mm -hmm. that on this show. I figure they're all pretty nasty. But that one scene kind of like, I don't know, I just bookmarked it in my head. Like, And then the next time we see him after he drowned in his dreams, he's back in the shirt with the bird on it. So mm -hmm. I'm like, why? I'm, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to come back to this in case this and, pans out into something. And Victor don't trust him. So you already said, I don't like, I don't like, uh, Yo. I don't like Elvis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he don't trust Victor. There's no doubt Victor don't trust, but I don't trust Victor. So <laughs> I don't trust facts. <laughs> I don't trust him. I don't trust his ass. I think something's going on with Victor, man. I think, hey, and no, Elgin is not Ellis's son. I don't want to hear that no more. I just okay. told y'all, no, that he can't be that I don't know color. Where this is coming it's from. Just, it just don't happen like that, man. Everybody's somebody relation. It's a, it, it ain't got to be that deep. It's not Star Wars. Right. I mean, not everyone's yeah. a Skywalker or a Palpatine or something Please. like that. Please. I was about to say, it's not Fast and Furious. Like, Chili you know, is not. It's definitely Victor. not Dom's You're kid. talking about cousin. You're my cousin, right? You're, well, Tabitha <laughs> is not actually Victor's mom. Please stop that. <laughs> Don is not his mom either. Right. Tilly's not his mom. Dude, stop, stop it. it. Stop. Yeah, people I, say I it's, a red, this it's a red wing blackbird. It's the bird that's on the shirt. It's a red wing blackbird. Is what it's I mean, didn't Julie have a, a shirt on too, like with, with some ravens on it or crows or something? I, the, the thing that stands out to me was that heart shirt because it was ugly that was mm -hmm. on her and stuff. You know, yeah, I know she had. A, I don't. I'm not sure about that. I know she she and she had she had a shirt on with the candy bar 
that Father Cotri had. Who? She had that shirt on. The same shirt with the candy bar that Father Cotri on. She had who, that who, shirt on. Who had that on? Julie. Julie had that shirt on. When she first got there, she had that shirt on. I thought she then, had on like a, a cat silhouette. Shirt. Yeah, she had, it, was it, like, was, it was like a she had another shirt on that was like a like a bunny or something like that. It looked kind of something like that. But she had the, the chocolate bar shirt on. Uh well, Father Cotri had something on his top on his thing. Uh forgot what it was. And I know that Boyd, someone had on the fame shirt because boy, I know that the actor Harold was his first show that he ever did was he was in fame. Uh, with, with Debbie Allen. That was his first show he ever got. So I know that they, when she went to the barn, I think she came out with the fame shirt on. And I think that's the reason why they put that in there because Harold's first show he ever did was the show Fame. If y'all ever seen that show, remember, remember my name, Fame. That was, go, go watch, go watch Harold dance to that. <laughs> Harold dance to that motherfucker. Uh, Tony, Tony, you ready for more voicemails? Yes, sir. This is area. Oh, uh, this is Jay Hall. Hey, what's going on, fellas? Jay Hall. That's a little quiet. I'm here for all the snakes, but I'm not going to do that right now. I just want to shed some light on my man, boy. His monologue in the church. Can we give it up for an Interdent Veil training day? I see a little glimpse of that. <laughs> man, that was a great monologue. Great finale. Great show. Great stream. Good to have you. Thanks. Yeah, no one says, says fuck. Like when he's screaming fuck, that was, I mentioned that earlier. That was just such a great scene he's had some great monologues this season uh i mean season season one i think overall is better but season two does have its moments like i think season season two might have my favorite episode in episode six of both seasons i think and some of harold's moments this season have been like top harold at some of his best work he's done in his life and uh th that monologue and this scene and him out being like you're not gonna beat me in the forest at the end like were were some of the best stuff i've ever seen from him and so, it was, it was, say gemini twin wants to know it uh there he she says that they're in a coma which is half dead half subconsciously that's why they're in limbo do y'all think that these people are in a coma i don't if they are, it's kind of weird. First of all, if it's the whole purgatory thing, throw the show away because we already did <laughs> some of that with Lost. I'd hope that they don't redo that all over again. And if it is, it's kind of also awkward because, like, the show kind of sort of teased at that. You know, like when uh, Boyd was talking to Abby and he was like, oh, man, it's, you know, wake up. I got to wake up, you know, because mm -hmm. he was thinking that maybe that's the case. So I kind of feel like whenever they throw those type of theories at us that that's usually like yeah we know you're thinking this but no it's something else at least that's my hope i hope it's something else and it's not something like that yeah and also you have like uh you know she goes to father country and asks him straight up did we survive right. and he says i had time to work on this answer so I don't think you're the only person who's come to me with this same exact question uh and um uh, Wanda's credible channel says she wants to know. I think the BIW is not the boy, and is not the boy, but a simulation programmer. If caught, he would be fired. So he pops in and out, so he can <laughs> direct them without detection. I so mean, my it's, man, it's, so it's my man awesome. jump in during his lunch breaks. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> or he got a back door. <laughs> Stuck in the matrix. That's Neo. <laughs> <laughs> the one. Thank, thank you for the super chat. The the that was great. Yeah. He's just sort of, like, put your phone away, son. You, you can't be playing with your phone when you're on the floor. You get fired up. <laughs> uh, Tony, this is area code 336. Hi, this is Coco Moody. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm calling from Greensboro, North Carolina. I just had to ask the question. I wonder if everyone who died from from, did they go back to the real world or do you only go back to the real world where you die from the tower? Okay, that's my question. Anyone? <sighs> It's an interesting question. Did the boy in white push her through the tower? Did she go 
through a portal if we're going like with you tony like where where some sort of transporter technology did does it have did she just get pushed through the portal or something or did she have to die to go there i don't think everyone that dies there comes back but it's funny that this season featured within someone's mind two characters that are dead in full form uh but i don't know i my instinct isn't that people survive when they die. It's like game over. You go back mm-hmm. to the real world. I think, I think when you nightmare on Elm street rules, you die in this dream, if, whatever it is, you die in for real. I think, yeah. um, I think he sent Tabitha on a quest, same way he sent Boyd on a quest when he put him in that tree and he ended up at the bottom of that. Well, I think he's trying to do what he can to move everybody around like chess pieces in order for them to do something else. Um, like the, fact that he was only we only ever heard him speak when he was in the tower that was the only time he audibly spoke to someone it was the only time he physically interacted with someone um tabitha went there because she heard the children are stuck in the tower i think there's something specific about that tower where he has more i don't want to say abilities but he's 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 capable of doing more when he's in that tower and one of the things he wanted to do with tabitha is what he did with Boyd and just push her through the window to send her on a quest, whether it's sent to the real world, whether he sent her back in time, whatever the case may be, he's moving her around like his main chess piece, the Karmanaku. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know about the whole, you know, death lets you go thing because, and again, this depends on who do you trust as a reliable source of information? Because remember Abby, she thought, Okay, let me just shoot everybody and that's going <laughs> to free everyone, right? But then she that didn't work. Um or at least we think it doesn't work because what was that at the end of uh season 1 mm-hmm. where Sarah was hearing a female voice that mm-hmm. I think sounded like it was Abby given the information uh she was relaying to Boyd, she was saying that like, "Yo, I was wrong." You know, or like, you know, in other words, killing people does not actually work. Now, was that voice reliable? I don't know, but um, I don't think Tabitha died. And, uh, you know, if anything, they said they found her on the road. So she was probably unconscious, you know, for a while. But I don't think death is uh, is the answer. And her face was fucked up. So I don't it think was. she just fell on her face from that height. She, she would have died, you know what I mean? But her face was definitely fucked up. I think, again, that, that scene to me points to the boy in white being evil. Again... What was going on at that particular time? They were dragged by some force closer to that tower. We don't know what actually dragged them there, but something dragged them there. And they got close to that tower. Once they got close to that tower, all of a sudden the rain started coming. And then here's the boy in white conveniently to the rescue. Oh, they're angry at you. Don't go forward anymore. Get inside this tree and you'll be safe. Was he trying to help them or was he trying to keep them away from the tower? You know, so it could have been looked like it was help. But in the end, it could have been he was just trying to derail them from getting closer to that tower. Because she says the children were being kept in that tower. Where? On the steps? Where they had them all laid out on the steps? There was no space to keep children in that tower. So something else is going on there. Because she said she had to save the children, Victor's mom. From the tower, mm-hmm. there's no space for those children to be in that tower I, unless something else is happening or there's a different type of tower. Did I they mean, say the kids were in the tower, or was it going to the tower was a way to save the kids? She said, "What was I, I have had to go through?" But I think, I think it was like, like I think Victor's mom thought she had to go to the tower to save the kids. I don't think it said that the kids were actually in the tower. So I mean, they gave. They gave clues that they were there because there were toys and stuff in the tower, right? Yeah. Like as she was going up the stairs, I think you see a box of crayons and toys and stuff going up there. So it seemed like they were there at some point. Yeah, it, it does. And and what would they be doing in there? Would they had them spinning around the torch. I mean, what what would be the purpose? I Unless mean, there's, there's some type of, you know, two different towers. It could be a different tower that 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 they could be in. It may not be that exact tower. <laughs> seemed like the kids were where jade was at right it seemed like that like when he seen I'm, that image of the slabs that slab that they, they couldn't have those slabs in that tower where they well, would seem like they were getting sacrificed that one thing that we know is that the faraway trees are not the only way to travel to different places 
right? Because Boyd went to that dungeon mm -hmm. and he just opened the door and he was automatically transported somewhere else. And then when he lit the torch, he was automatically transported back to the yeah. dungeon. So there are weird d pocket dimensions or, you know, I don't know, uh, invisible doors, so to speak, to travel to different places. So that's why I'm kind of thinking, like, I don't think the answer was in the lighthouse, but rather like the lighthouse was probably the right path to go to to do whatever, like Anthony was saying, whatever quest that you right. have to go do. So let's say that's the fact. And we say that she went, she was going there, trying to make her way there. And she said, by getting there, I would be able to save the children. And she said specifically, we're going home right after I'm done with this. Right. She told them we're going to go home. So the only person we seen in that town was the boy in white. So yeah. was she going there to murder the boy in white to kill him? Is he behind this situation? Is that what's going on? Because if the kids ain't there and the only person we seen there was the boy in white, Maybe she caught on and said, I'm, this is where this dude's physical body is, and he's projecting himself everywhere else, but you get to the top of that tower, that boss level in the video game, and now it's time to fight the boy in white, and she <laughs> failed the first time because she got are kicked you, out of the building. She are you talking about Victor's back. mom? I'm saying um, in general, from yeah. Victor's mom, she said that, I'm, if she said I'm going to the tower to, to solve everything, maybe uh -huh. she was going there to kill the boy in white. That's the only person we've seen in that tower. The video game thing is fun in the sense, especially uh, with what I think Eamon was saying about uh, about lighting the torch. And then it's like a, a little quick little pocket dimension thing. Reminds me of like Super Mario Brothers 2 mm. US mm -hmm. version where you throw down the little bottle and a door opens and you can just walk right. into the next thing. And it was just like that moment in, in a video game or so all those different little things exist in there to be able to travel. I was actually surprised how easily Sarah Boyd and Kenny walked back to the area in my mind. I thought it would have been much further away. Right. Uh, and they just got right back to that area back and forth. No problem. But uh, let's get to another voicemail. Let me just go through these super chats real quick. Uh, 840 over 840 people here watching. Make sure you hit that thumbs up for your boys up in here number one show for the fans by the fans right here escaping from we're doing this right now david p says tony how has this finale affected your alien theory it hasn't affected in any way it still could be aliens it may not be i don't think it's given any direction towards it so i think it's just that's still in limbo right there so we'd have to just keep seeing and everything else uh, and there's one more here let me take this one uh from ryan he says, uh, I think the tower and the torch are similar in function. The tower is a massive torch. Which I, I could see. So you're saying the torch ha gave the boy the ability to try. And I think, do y'all think, because mm -hmm. I do, whether you do, I don't know if you do, but boy went back in time when he got that torch. Like he went back when that structure was old. Like at the time he goes in it, it's ruins. And then when he goes inside, it's whole. So I, I thought that he traveled back in time when it was whole. Uh, what did y'all think about that when, when he when boy went in that structure? Because he was like going there. He's like, right here, people were here, people were here. And it looked like, you know, like archaeologists when they dig up spots, you know, that's been whole years ago. So when it was whole, he went in it. So I think that was him time traveling. But uh, what, what did y'all think about the tower, the torch, and everything else? I don't I don't think it's time travel. I, I really have a big problem with the whole torch thing every anyway. Um, I don't know if it's just like an editing mistake or what. But I remember when Boyd first came out of that structure, out of that little chamber um, after meeting Martin, he his torch was still lit. Like he came out of it. The torch was still lit. And then the dog came out and then showed him the way back to town. Um, so that's how we knew it wasn't too far because he got back in one night. But when he wanted to go back for this season finale scene, he had to light the torch. And then all of a sudden, like you guys said, it's like a Super Mario Brothers invisible door. <laughs> and now he could go back inside. So I, I've been having trouble with that scene um, as a whole. I, I, I hope they find a way to reconcile that. Like, why all of a sudden is the torch able to make the ruins appear when it didn't make them disappear? It, it's not adding up fully for me. Um, but I don't I don't think he traveled back in time either, because when he went in there the second time, Julie and the, uh, Randall and 
you know, all their ghosts were in there. And I'm I'm like, what, did the cicada creatures send their spirits back in time too? It, it's it, I need a little bit more for those two things to reconcile for me. I have a question for you guys because I'm trying to sort of figure something out as well. I know that Boyd got the idea to light the light from what Fatima's grandmother said in the uh, the wedding speech, or I don't know if it was what Ellis said, but Ellis, whatever. Yeah. But, but was there something else that he heard before there that connected the dots with him to be able to think I need to light the torch? Or is it just that that sort of made him go, oh, you know what? I have to go get a tor torch. I'm just wondering if there's any other thing that do we know what the other dot that he connected from the speech was, or am I, am I missing something or was no. there nothing? There was one time when he was talking to Donna and he was like, man, if only I could have something physical in my hands, you know, like just to make <laughs> sense of things. So like right after he was like, Oh, I need something physical. <laughs> then Ellis said what he said. And he was like, uh, Oh, so those, those the, were the two that's, dots. That's the two dots. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, the whole thing was about that. Well, let me say what up to Carmine from Red Team Reviews in in there. I'm say up to my man Mandrell. You know, in there. Too. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, when I look at that whole situation, like he had the torch in his hand, I don't remember. Did, did he, I don't remember him going in the trailer with the torch. Like I don't remember that scene. Uh, him with going the in torch. there having the torch when he went in there with Victor and them. Like I remember him putting it out. Yeah, no, he took it with him. He took it with him. Like when yeah, he went into I, the truck or whatever. Yeah, I don't remember him bringing it in that tray. He must have, but I just don't remember seeing him coming in there with the torch. And how come no one questioned him? Like, where'd you get that shit from? <laughs> you know I mean? well, he, he was scared for their lives. They was just like, yo, hurry up and get in here before somebody yeah. hear you. And Elgin was coming right behind him, too. Yeah. So it was getting kind of fast paced with stuff. All right. All right. That that that, that is what it is. It's but I mean, like look, the whole the whole torch thing, I mean. Again, you know, this is why I really like the dialogue with what uh, Jade was saying with Tom. And he was like, um, yo, a lot of this stuff is not natural. Right. And he was like, no, it's not that it's not natural. It's just not familiar. And all I took that to mean was a lot of the things that we think are natural, normal, logical don't apply over here. Right. Like you literally had this torch. You walked out a door. And you were transported somewhere else. You took the light out of the torch. You light it back up. And then you're back in. None of that makes sense. But it worked. <laughs> it happened. That's, you know, so again, we have to kind of like adapt how things work here and just throw some of our own logic out the door because it, it's this show is not going to make sense. It's, it's just not. Not in this place. Uh, Tony, a couple of people were asking if you could put on slow mode in the chat. Oh, all right. Yeah, I'll take care of that right now. And uh, let's get to area code 216 while you're figuring this out. This, I think someone has a question about season three. Got a question. Season three. And I almost positive it's going to open up as Tabitha. It's going to be, they will have a scene with her. And I honestly believe Victor's sister made it. I honestly believe Victor's mother threw her inside the throwaway tree, the, the, the fadeaway tree or whatever it's called. <laughs> we know, we know what you mean, the bottle tree. daughter and threw her in there. <laughs> so, yeah, do you think uh, a couple of questions there for everyone? Do you think that uh, Victor's sister is alive? Did she? I got a theory about it. Mm -hmm. I, I do. I so do. So Tony, Tony, start out. What do you, what do you think? I, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, say, <laughs> I'll say something really fast and then I'll let the guests go, of course. Uh, I think if she has the 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 lunch pail, then we see the sister, because that's proof she knows Victor. If she doesn't have it, then we don't. That that's what I would say. If the if the lunch pail is there, the only reason they gave it to him, there has to be a reason. It wasn't to eat no snacks. It would be proof that she goes in there and there's some type of doctor named Eloise or someone in there. And she goes, I was with your brother. And she's like, oh, you are with my brother. And she shows the lunch pail. Then she would believe it. I think that would be the only thing I could see going on while she would have that. But yeah, yeah, go ahead. What do you think is going to happen? How it's going to start off next season? Uh, I agree. I mean, um, I don't know if it needs, I don't know if it needs the lunch pail. I like that idea. Um, Cause it could be anything. It could be like, Hey, I got this drawing that Victor gave me, or, you know, here's this pencil or crayon or whatever. But 
Um, but I do agree that like my prevailing theory is just like that, that uh, Victor's sister made it out. Um, the fact that Victor said that his mom died right there, right before making it, you know, out to the tree. I'm, I'm thinking that's how season three actually starts by actually showing us what happened with Victor's mom, showing that, yeah, like eventually, you know, the sister made it to the tower. Maybe she got pushed too. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe the boy in white was out there body slamming everybody through the windows. We don't know, uh, but I do think that she made it out, and I'm pretty sure that's part of the reason why we've been seeing this connection between Victor and Tabitha, because Victor is really seeing his mom through Tabitha. He's seeing that that same bond, that same chemistry. So it makes sense for um, Tabitha to run into the sister one way or another, and. Um, and I think she's going to be dumb enough to be like, we got to go back. <laughs> like, we got to go back and uh, save everybody. But... We got to go back to the out e you imagined, or I was imagining uh, Boy and White doing the cold, the stone cold stunner to people. Just like, like <laughs> with a glass breaking. <laughs> yeah. Like, everybody. <laughs> hit, hit everybody. A super kicking them. Like, everybody get a stunner. And the stunner. Like, ah, yeah. ah. <laughs> like, ah. but you know what? I, I think that, and, and, uh, and you can answer me real quick. I'm sorry. But uh, I think that them saying that the boy in white, she didn't think it was a, 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 a kid helps the show because this kid, he aged a lot in one year. You know what I mean? It's been one year, but he looked totally different to me. And I think he's going to age out of the role quick. So if you say he's an adult and he's not a boy, it brings an easy way to transition this guy out of that role into another character. So I think it also helps with production of the show. But I move on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I'm with everybody. I think um, Eloise made it out, but I think we're going to go a little bit further. I think we're probably going to learn that other people made it out, too. Um, one of the theories that I put out on my channel was that um, I think Elgin's grandmother um, might be someone that has visited from Bill and Escaped. I, I don't have too much evidence about it, but one thing that always um, stood out to me was when he was talking to Sarah about his grandmother, he was talking about how she used to crochet owls. It was always owls. And if you look up something like um, about owls, they're natural predators to like crows and ravens. And they've been giving us imagery and iconography of like ravens getting killed. I think we saw them getting killed in the caves underneath the town. Um, it, I, 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 have a, I have a slight little theory that she may have been to Frumville and was always crocheting owls every Sunday as like trying to make some sort of type of token or some sort of uh, 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 talisman, so to speak, to kind of ward off people's spirits. That's, that's one thing that I think has probably happened, but we need to see more to add and support that. But I totally think that, yes, Eloise made it out. Yes, we're going to see more people who made it out. And yes, eventually people are going to band together and try to go back to Frumville. Yeah, you know, kind of to Tony's point earlier about uh the boy in white not being a boy. I I noticed that line too, and I was like, I know y'all didn't just no way you about to just throw away a line of dialogue dialogue in any type of TV production. If you say it, you mean it. It has to say or mean something. Um, but I I kind of took it as even though I like the idea of the whole production thing because that gives them a lot of leeway to just throw in an older actor or whatever, um, and mix it up. But I kind of took it more as like he's not really a person, you know, like he's more of like a ghost or an entity of some sort. Um, you can say alien. It's OK. Maybe he a bunch of zeros and ones. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> he's not a boy. He's Pinocchio. Zero, 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 zero. You know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree that there, there are no throwaway ones. Everything means something. And she said that for a reason. It, it means something. But again, it does help for production standards because this kid aged up fast. And they only showed him once all year. You know, that's the only scene he's got all year was that one little little thing and everything else. He was pretty, I wasn't like, he was in every scene last year, but he was in a little bit and everything else. You know what I mean? uh phil you want to take another question yeah we we got a bunch of voicemails and we'll get to as many as we can get to tonight yeah. any ones we don't do tony and i will pick up on a later stream but uh but let's get to a few here or a bunch area code 504 hi love the panel this is missy calling from new orleans my question was 
I don't know if you've discussed it already because I just got here, but I was wondering, did you see any similarities between the symbol and the symbol that was on the hospital as their logo? Oh, it looks very good. similar to the, the screen screen. It to see I for love real. your thoughts on it. Okay. Yeah, great call. Uh, we, I didn't personally see it, but I saw enough people talking about it. I think I, I don't know if it was on the Reddit post, on the episode discussion, or uh, in the comment section. Is I did a one to one or similar. I didn't. I, I didn't actually see it. I just saw a lot of people talking about it, and people in the it, chat have verified it. Two but things I, I've heard about it. Number one thing with the symbol. And number two, it wasn't Tabitha in the reflection looking out the window. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's the quantum it, leap. Thing. It was, it, yeah, it was Tabitha. I looked at it. It's definitely Tabitha. He was saying she had blonde hair. She, it People was, in the live chat are also saying similar, similar. It resembles that's the it. sun reflecting on her and her <laughs> reflection of the sunlight on her hair reflecting back. Y'all, it's not that deep. She's not five different people or nothing. That's her. Tony, I actually sent you uh, a screenshot of the image. Um, with the uh, symbol, because it was on the computer next to Tabitha, and it's this, it's the whole, it's the hospital logo. Okay. That that kind of looks, I think it looks like the uh, the symbol that Jade has been seeing. Yeah. You know, the whole time with the vines and everything. So uh, I I think it's similar. I wouldn't say it's the same, but it is kind of similar, and it's a little creepy. Like, why is this a thing? I don't know if you could present it here or not. Or... Yeah, I think I can just bring it up. Can I, I don't I'll know. Can we that. do that? Yeah, I'll pull. I, I'll, you, you can do it too, uh, Yasha, but I'll, I'll pull it up if I can. Okay. Yeah. You can go to another quick voicemail while you guys are pulling that up. Uh, it's here it go, 413. Here. There it is. What do you think? Oh, wait. Well, wait. Yeah, that's a little. Is that it right there? Yeah, that's it? it. I mean, if you could, I'm, I don't know. You can't zoom in, but. I think, yeah, I think. I but that's it. That's it on the computer screen. Let me see if I can get it. No, I don't. I can't zoom in from here. No more. I have to that. download the picture itself, and then I can zoom in from it. But this is it right here. Yeah, it's circular in shape. Yeah. I mean, I think you could make it from that. Like you can make the symbol, and I don't think they give you a one-to-one -one right. situation. They wouldn't do that. That'd be too. That's more like a Yankee symbol to me, or something. It's a circle. It's definitely a circle, and it definitely has some lines going through it. You know what yeah. I mean? Flowers. You can build that line stuff up through it. Like if you added pieces to his symbol, you could get this symbol. It 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 almost looks like the vines, like curving in different ways. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely not a one to one at all. Nice. And uh, area code 413. What do you think about the woman that was killed by the cicadas, the first woman? Paula, right? Her yeah, best Paula. friend had no difficulty splitting the throat of the man that was putting away the gun. I thought it was really interesting that the cicadas appeared to have torn her body apart. And instead of her being included in the three, she just got murdered. Do you think that he actually murdered her? Even though she probably really was seeing the visions, but do you think that he was the one that butchered her? Murder. Uh, what, no. what, what, what do you what do you think? Yeah. I, I mean, you you heard the cicadas like from mm -hmm. the house. So the fact that you heard the cicadas, Reggie repeated the nursery rhyme just out of nowhere. Um you know, I don't think it would make sense for him to be the killer. And on top of that, clearly, you know, as Phil had mentioned earlier, like he's not a good killer. Like he he couldn't kill Boyd, you know. So uh I don't think he's got it in him like that. I think it was just the monster establishing itself as being that big of a problem. Look how much look how much it scared everybody that they could die in their sleep. Like that was the goal to get people to be scared because it clearly feeds off of fear in some way shape or form i also don't think um paula was one of the three like yeah a lot of people was. like you know it sounded like they came for four but like e-man just said it sounded like it was more so the monster establishing itself as it became a threat 
first thing it did was it haunted Elgin, then it haunted Kenny, and then it haunted Paula, but Paula ended up dying. You know, um, they were all attacked in their sleep, but they happened to be woken up by someone before it could actually finish the job. Mm -hmm. I don't think Reggie woke his sister or his girlfriend or whoever she was up in time, and she just ended up being another victim. Yeah, he did say he was downstairs cooking, so. Without a doubt. And and I thought it was also weird that Randall spent the whole night outside. No one fuck with him. No, nah, he, he, had the, he had the monster in him. He had the monster in him. He had the monster in him. So, like, they were all staying away. All the monsters were staying away from the apex predator, right? Like, yeah. if this is his food, we just going to watch. Yeah. He already got, um, Randall already got touched. You know, like, it's like any creature when they see a dead animal in the wood, if it wasn't the one that they killed, they're not really going to mess with it. And, you know, for whatever reason. That being said, you know, the milkman peed on him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but you know, because they did go after him. They went at when he ran you know, away. They, they, you know, they, they went. They were like, "Oh, he's passed out. Let's pee. Let's pee on him just a little bit." I thought they just went to go watch him work. Like, yo, our boy is out now. We about <laughs> yo, watch <him. laughs> yo. They, they found his ass pretty fast too. I would say, you know, because he, he was running, and it seemed like as soon as they pulled over to the side of the road, he was right there. Like he took off. He, he was probably that. running towards the road too. <laughs> He, I mean, I know up. I would. He talked all tough, but when that shit went to bed, he was like, man, fuck this. I don't know why. Listen, I don't know why people think Randall's tough. Randall is a sucker. Did y'all not <laughs> see this man in the bus? He wasn't going to open that door. He all barked and no bite. Yeah, he went nothing. He is he grabbed up Donna, a woman with a little pocket. Right. That was it. <laughs> Suck a move, man. You want to dance? You want to <laughs> dance? dance? You want to dance? <laughs> New plan. I do yeah. think it's. I do think it's interesting. I don't know if you guys talked about this when when I walked away. In the sense that w with like Paula being killed and Kenny being attacked, but neither one of them were enslaved as one of the three. I don't know if it had to be a certain type of person that they needed to find the hook into them, right? Uh, for whatever it's worth, but uh, but or if this and it also. I, we haven't mentioned it yet tonight. There was the whole thing that if they were able to ensl enslave or kill the three of them, then it would unlock the cicadas forever. Like then you couldn't stop them. So if they got the three of them and or and they killed the three of them, there was no stopping them after that point. Uh, so I, I don't know. I think it's I think it's just interesting that Kenny got away possibly because he woke up and and uh, Paula didn't. Because who knows? Oh. Maybe maybe Reggie did kill her. <laughs> no, but pa Paula died because she's not a main character. Right, don't exactly. Care about Paula. <laughs> dude, like, dude, that's the truth. Don't nobody care about Paula. Dude, that's don't nobody honestly, care about Paula. that's the truth. That's the truth. So let's be real. Were, there's a theory going on that, you know. <laughs> I mean, rest Reggie, in peace, Paula. You know, let's, let's, <laughs> yeah, you can pour something out for it, but don't nobody care about Paula. There's <laughs> a theory going that um the characters that were taken were taken up like a role. Like the, the poem was like, they lie, they cheat, they steal. Right. And they were saying like, you know, Marielle, she stole mm -hmm. uh, the yeah, drug yeah. out of the medicine yeah. cabinet, you know, and then each of the other characters was either a liar or a cheater. And they were fulfilling the, I don't know, prophecy or yeah. the requirements of the poem. Yeah, yeah I think we all got Mary Ellen's stealing ass. I think everyone oh, yeah. knew she was getting strapped to the wall. But the other two were <laughs> shot, right? I mean, Randall did break somebody's nose, I want to say, in Colony House. Yeah, he I, did kick that dude in the know. face. Uh, I guess we could say that it's you know it's vague. I, mean, I don't I don't know. He, no, it's he, vague. It's he vague, broke the rules. I mean? Like I don't know. Whatever you want. <laughs> he broke the status quo. Sure. And, and and it could be breaking the person. Like they broke him when they scared him, and he finally ran away. Sure. Like before you seen him in there, and he was like, "You don't get to don't turn your back on me. Hey, you don't turn your back on me." And maybe they, all right, we finally broke his ass. He got scared and he ran away. And that's why they were able to get him. But we do hear Boyd said, you can't break me at that. Screaming, you can't break me. You can't break me. You know, like, maybe like so it could have been a situation like that where they finally broke his ass. Mm -hmm. And that, that's why they were able to come get him. And so some could be like, uh, what was that movie? Skeleton Key? Where if you, you got to believe in it for in order for it to affect you, right? That's the way it was with that hoodoo stuff. 
Like mm-hmm. if you don't believe in it, it doesn't affect you. But as soon as you start believing, that's where they can get There's you. some Freddy stuff with that too. Like in some of the Freddy movies, you need to believe in Freddy or believe in the fear of Freddy for him to be actually be able to get to you. That might be Freddy versus Jason. That might be like Freddy, people need to be afraid of me again. So and he like gets Jason to set that up. Anyways, let's take some another voicemail before I talk about Freddy versus Jason. Area code five six two. What's going on, everybody? This is Joshua from the 562 Long Beach, California. Man, happy fun day, everybody. God bless everybody in the chat. And uh, first and foremost, everybody hit the like button for Tony, assembling the dream team for the season finale, man. Uh, wow, what a ride. Ten weeks flew by. I ain't really got nothing to comment on. I was going to say just thank you guys for, you know, having the show. You know, every E-Man, the movie. You know, Tony, of course, Phil, just uh, great content. Continue. Wa- I'm going to continue to watch you guys, you know, even after the show's over. Um, yeah, man, just, just good times, and I'm enjoying the streams. And uh, God bless everybody. Set. Have a good night. Peace. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, area code 802. Hey, guys, this is Chris from Salt Lake City, Utah. And I got a question for Perp Minded. On his channel, he's constantly showing a photo. <laughs> well, uh, well per- we get, Perp can't answer the question right now because, but we'll, we'll try to we'll try to answer Perp's question, I guess. But uh, or we'll save this call for when he pop pops back on. Uh, we'll save this call if he pops back on. Yeah, we'll we'll have him on again. Uh, area yeah. code two three one. Yo, this is Ponch in Tennessee, and my question is: In the previews you guys showed us. Tabitha was like walking through some town or something. What happened with those visions? Did we see a thanks? Did we see another vision of Tabitha walking through some sort of I don't town? think we've seen her walking through the town. I think we've seen her when she had her vision that she was standing outside of the town that it looked brand new. Mm. Like when they showed her walking up the steps, it showed her because first it showed Donna come in. First scene was Donna outside and she was writing the number on of how many days they were safe and then it switched to tabitha's vision and it showed her outside that same building but that building was brand new so it didn't show her walking there just showed her standing there and then the camera was moving around her and stuff and all that so it didn't show so that's why i i do think time travel is going to come into play in this whole situation so tony just uh, you think she went back in time here I think that it's a good possibility that she. I know Boyd did. I, I'm 100 percent convinced that Boyd went back in the time when he went into that room. Uh, but as for a Tabitha back in time, Gotta right now, I, I don't. Sorry. I don't know. I don't think she's gonna. I think if she runs into Eloise, it's gonna be an adult version of Eloise. It won't be a baby version of Eloise and everything. Else. It'll be an adult version. So. Oh yeah. I, I don't know but if she went back in the time at that. I mean, it would be great if she did. She went back in time. She learned more about the town and everything else. But the, the technology Mm-mm. that was in the room with her looked modern. It didn't look like back in the day in the clothes at the doctors and stuff. And that's another thing, too. Let me tell you something. Not that I've been in the hospital for, uh, for three days. Like, she supposedly was a conscious for three days straight. Ain't no doctor letting you get out that motherfucking bed. You can't just get up, pull the shit off your arm, and walk to the window if you've been unconscious for three days. They will drag your ass back to that bed. She came in like, how you feeling? How you doing? They'll be like, whoa, what the fuck are you doing out of bed? Get your ass back in bed. It wouldn't have been like, hey, how you feeling? How's you doing? How's everything? You feeling good? Uh, that, that, Come on, that, man. They're going to say that for season three. Yeah, <laughs> doctors don't. They don't, don't want to put her in shock. <laughs> Doctors don't be acting like that. You know what I mean? So now that I think that's all a game. I think it's all suspect her being in there. I think it, she made she made this be in a different area of the place and they just actors or whatever this planner and everything else and all that. So that, that that's that's what I think it is when, when it when it comes down with her right, right now and everything. So uh people thinking she's in a mental institution. Again, Shutter Island. I should call that the Shutter Island theory. How do, how do y'all feel about the Shutter Island theory? Do you think it could be a situation like that? I don't I know about that. I'm not buying it. Yeah, I hope not. Yeah, I mean, like, sometimes, I guess, 
I guess the issue I have is like, like I don't mind if you tell me it's aliens, I'm fine with that. If you tell me it's a sim- sim- uh, simulation, I'm cool with that. If you tell me that you know this is a supernatural mm-hmm. thing with ghosts or magic or whatever, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I don't, I don't really like the idea of trying to make all these other things happen at the same time because if you sit here and say that you know this is all let's say the shutter island idea or whatever it doesn't help with all the other stuff like the talisman or the cicadas and the like it's too much it's too much like pick a lane go with it i'm cool with the mystery but like if we keep adding all this extra stuff you just got a whole bunch of slop now yeah this is just people trying to reconcile and figure out, you know, everybody who is in Fromville, or at least most people, they came there after like a significant life event happened to them, whether it's something traumatic or it's just something significant. And they're really just trying to figure out how these pieces of the puzzle, you know, fit together. You know, we got all the lousy pieces, not even corners or edges that help. Um, but the fact that Tabitha came there after, you know, the death of her son, Thomas, we need to figure out how does this fit into the greater narrative? And that's where people are coming in with this, you know, is it Shutter Island? Is she just really just still going through the motions like DiCaprio's character did after the passing of her son? I don't buy it. I mean, that's cool and all, but that doesn't make sense for like someone like Jade. You know what I'm saying? Like Jade just sold his company. He was about to go celebrate. The bus driver was, you know, trying to treat herself. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's too much going on that conflicts one thing. And I'm just like, you know, I I see where people are trying to come with it. But like, sometimes the simplest answer is probably best, too. I I, I say that all the time. Keep it simple. Because when you go too big, it's never that big. You know, you can go through all these elaborate things. Believe me, I did it with Game of Thrones. I came up with these elaborate theories. <laughs> I, I actually, you know, I've got this one guy who was a great Game of Thrones uh, theory maker. And he got to meet George R. R. Martin. And he asked George R. R. Martin the question. He's like, oh, is this, this, or that? And George was like, huh? I was like, <laughs> like uh, excuse me? <laughs> I, 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 like, all that? And I, you know, Yo. you know I mean? like, it was. Too much. Like, you no, can people put people put in more to what writers are gonna write. Uh, John Lennon had this like a dude sleeping on his property, and he like walked up to him. He's like, "My whole life's about you." When you wrote that song, boy, you're gonna carry that weight. It was about you. And John Lennon turned to him and goes, "Well, Paul wrote that." And the guy's face was like, "Oh!" And then he invited the guy in and fed him a lot, fed him lunch. But like, but it's like you know, it's the writers write something sometimes, and people interpret it. Both things are valid, but it's. It's uh, you know, it's never what the writer intent does. Sometimes the writer's just writing words. You're playing with yeah. words, playing with ideas. But I think in there's a fine line between what I think From is pulling off to what, and I know the show has fans to what Twin Peaks is just too much for me. What well, like, and I and I don't think From's there. Uh, but in a sense, we are. I, I think the scene with Jade talking about the puzzle pieces and all of that was in some ways, the writers talking to us at times. Yes. Uh, there was a yes. keep it simple line in that. I, there was uh there was, there was just a lot of, I forget the exact moments, but there seemed to be some, this doesn't make sense. We're in the middle. It's a, it's, it's almost similar to what you're, what you're saying, you man. It's uh, and I think there is some element of this, but I also have heard those same interviews with the writers and I've heard Harold and more specifically, I've heard Harold in an interview several times say, answer the story, answer the thing. I don't, when I go to parties and stuff, people are always like, the ending of Lost sucks. I, I don't want to do that again. And when I signed up for this mm-hmm. show, I had to make sure that they knew what they wanted to do. And right. Harold's at the point in his career, he doesn't have to make that shit up. He right. can get work. If he's going right. to say that and sign on for this, we might not all, not every single person watching might love what the ending is, but it's going to be thought out. And yeah. done in a good way if they have the time, I think. Yeah, don't let, let me it. let me just add one more thing. Like what Jade said, I think people really need to pay attention to what he said mm-hmm. about connecting two points. You have to like it's cool to th- to theorize. I theorize. Me, me and Anthony, we talk about theories all the time, but it's like don't just take a thread and run with it. If you find something that's interesting, find another thing that makes a direct correlation. Mm-hmm. And then run with it. Then, you know, fully flesh that out. But just because you see one thing and be like, well, there it is. It's aliens or up. Oh, it's <laughs> ghosts or up. Oh, now I know. Like, wait until you get at least two things to connect. And then, you know, you could really flesh it out at that point. 
Agreed. You know, I I, I agree with you 100%. It has to be multiple right. things right. that point to that direction. They're not just going to give you one clue. You know what I mean? They're going to give you multiple clues. Like like, like the aliens theory. And they have multiple, <laughs> we have, I have multiple clues that I could point to that point to aliens. You know what I mean? We could point oh, to no. the candy bar that he had that, that was out of this world with a with, 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 with stone on it. You could point to the hotel that was that has a star motel that it was named that they took off. There's a lot more things that point to aliens too, right? This this is not about aliens. I see y'all in the chat. See these people. You know, I have a, I have a challenge for the Look, people. I wanted to that. piggyback on that real quick. I wanted to first off, I want to give a shout out to all the fans and theory makers because y'all are the ones that are making this show awesome. We love engaging with all of you in our comments on Reddit, and you guys are awesome. But you tend to make more sense than the writers do. Like E-Man said, he and I, we go through this. We talk about, you know, like even with Marvel, right? We tend to give them more credit and come up yeah. with better ideas than they do. Oh, They're not God. that smart. One <laughs> <decision. laughs> one, one <decision. laughs> right. Yeah. And that's a, you're right. They're not that smart. <laughs> They're not like, that smart. They're really not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how that I, I remember one thing, and I, I yeah, I want to talk another stream. I'll, I'll come up with these people in the chat. I'm talking to, and we'll go through the whole thing, and we'll go through the whole thing with the aliens. We'll do a whole stream, but yeah, listen, Loki season one, not Loki. I mean, uh, what's Wand WandaVision. Wandavision. Yeah. Wandavision. The octagon. Let the, the octagon in this future. The octagon is right here. The octagon. Octagon didn't mean shit. It's all Mufisto. It's all Mufisto. It's all Mufisto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, hey, it, but like that—that's—that's that's kind of the reason why I'm like, yo, if y'all gonna make theories, try to find the dots first and connect them. Only because, and I don't say that to discourage people from theorizing. I think it's great that we do that. It's really fun. I just don't like the after effect of what happens when we amplify this fantastical idea up, and the show doesn't deliver. Yeah, never and then we problem. get disappointed. We mm -hmm. blame the show. We like, oh, this is trash, and it's like, well. They never promised this. You That's just right. hyped it up, you know, that way. So, you know, like there were people that were mad that Mephisto did not show up in WandaVision. That's not the show's fault. Like, <laughs> he wasn't in it. You didn't so, know that about it. And the Octagon no way. Mean, didn't mean a thing. And they're here in the picture and in the background here. And it's like, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> look at the <laughs> eyes. Look at the eyes in the background. Right. It's right there. It's right there. <laughs> Oh, they're not that, that smart. These writers ain't that smart. We've seen it with like shows like Under the Dome, and I don't. I, I feel everybody who watched that show, who went through that pain with me for four yeah. seasons, we know we were tracing every clue. We were looking mm -hmm. at every monarch butterfly. We were trying to figure out who these people were in another life, and it just didn't pan out to anything. Heroes oh. is another one. You tried to follow like the oh. whole heroes connective oh. tissue don't story, and what's Peter Petrelli oh. connected to Sat? Like all like all this stuff, and you'd realize. Yeah. And it's a Dexter, there was two bad endings in a row. Oh. <laughs> How that's did they that's the only life. show that went off the air yeah. with a bad Vince ending. Gilligan had bad two, and did a worse that did they Vince Gilligan did two good endings with Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad, uh, which is very tough to do. And the Dexter people managed to do two bad endings. <laughs> that, that takes talent, though. They did too. And I came up with a whole theory. People were like, Your shit was better than this ending, man. They should have walked with you because. And, and and they did. Uh, Boss T said that's why the showrunners um, said that the talismans are clues to something bigger than the second half of the clues in the cave. What do you guys think? I think we deal with the talismans. The, what I heard was that every talisman is different. But what do y'all think about the talismans themselves? I didn't. Uh, he said that the talisman was a clue to something bigger. Yeah, he said. He said that the showrunners yeah. said. Said that the talismans are a clue to something bigger, and the second half <laughs> of the clue is in the cave. So, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. in the cave, the second clue is in there. Yeah, um, I agree with that. Uh, I, all I know is I looked at some of the uh, promotional images from uh, MGM, and it was what I found interesting about it was that for episode 10 they started showing more images from the cave from episode one. So I was like, wait a minute. Like, why are you emphasizing something from all the way back then? So um, I agree with that. I do have a theory about it. No disrespect to nobody here, but I'm not going to share it here because I need mm -hmm. to keep the cooking on that a little bit. But I do think that that is true. Um, and if my theory is true, I think that 
it's going to spell out a bigger problem that's going to happen later on, probably in season three or four. Okay. Okay. But it is in the caves. It is in the tunnels. I'm I'm with you about the talismans for all the theory hunters out there, the Easter egg hunters. They've been pointing out how the talismans um kind of resemble the exact artwork that is in the caves. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You see, it's the same exact style, things like that. But what each symbol represents, I'm 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 with Eman. We got to let that cook simmer for a little while. But they they I'm I'm with you 110. percent There is something. There is connect between the talismans themselves and the art that's in the cave it's the same artist you know who drew them uh, so you know artists Victor, matter man yeah and victor's saying that you know all oh, the, the monsters drew these symbols like they ain't got crayons down there <laughs> why how'd they draw that shit and everything else look we at all the stuff they got it. They got all that. Why do you think that know. orange they, magic they marker was in there? They can't they see. Up. They got no light boxes. See, they, nah, they, they seem real capable. They nocturnal. <laughs> yeah, they're washing their clothes and bleaching their clothes. Right. Uh, I, I think little performances with the dummies. Come on, yeah. man. They got a whole show I, 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 <laughs> I think MGM needs to send all four of us each a talisman so we can investigate. I've been, I've been it, waiting for one. Investigate. Man, it. Closer. I do it. I ask yeah. Each of the four of us need to get one and we can investigate. We can answer this question better. And, and no doubt. Let me say uh, a spot out to a new member. Uh, Jesse is a new member. Thank you so much for becoming a member uh, and everything. Else. Again, you have we have over 920 people watching. Hit that thumbs up for your boys up in here. And subscribe to everyone's channel here. There's 900 some people here. It's almost 1,000 subscribers these channels can get. You know, Phil the Issues Guy, E-Man, The Movie Blog, the Don Tony Teflon, Teflon TV, and my boy Perp who was on here. Subscribe to these channels, man. Show us some love. That That's how we know that you like what we do. By subscribing to the channel, liking the videos, and leaving comments, it all helps the YouTube algorithm and helps us our content get pushed out to more people and stuff. So definitely do that. Uh, you have an- another. Oh, we have ton- we have we have voicemails for days. <laughs> as they say. Uh, area code nine one uh, th- four. Hello, this is Lady K from Westchester. I have two questions. One is Tabitha's injuries. Do they seem similar to the one from the car accident or did it seem like it came from the tower or whatever happened? And the second one would be, why would they need to kill the three people that they got, Julie, uh, Randall and Marianne, if (laughs) they had Martin in there, you know, basically doing time and a half and not being able to die? Those are my two questions. And you guys are doing great. Thanks. Hmm. I I mean, uh, so... Martin was alive because they had those worms in him that kept him alive. Right. Actually, it was the, so the, it seemed the experiment they were running on him was but maybe did the worm entity, well, for, in threat of a better way of calling it, did the worm entity put Martin there in that moment to give whatever it is to Boyd? Uh, was that the thing laughing and ha ha, I gotcha? Uh, I don't know. It's it's just a it, a thought because again we've talked about this. A, bun- a few times tonight that Martin was in bad shape, apparently, but he was conscious in talking. And when we saw the other ones there, their eyes were rolled up in their head. And it could have been that over years of torture, Martin was able to get consciousness, or it could be that Martin was some sort of projection that was meant to mess with Boyd, similar to Abby that we see later in this episode that maybe she would, I mean, she was obviously the voice of the worms or, or the bigger power, whatever. I'm, but uh, I'm just calling it the worm entity right now. Cause I don't know what, whatever the hell else to call it. Someone just sent me a picture. It may be a spoiler, not from what we see in this season, but uh, no more spoilers. It's uh, it's done. I don't have to, I don't have subtitles to read tomorrow. I, I'm going to try. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm get this up. I'll, 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 what I'll do is I'll send it to email and then I'll be able to pull it up really fast. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, y'all keep doing anything while I get this. Well, I, I forgot the. Uh, the, the first question. question was about uh, Tabitha's injuries. Was uh, did it look like her injuries in the hospital were from being pushed out the window or the car accident? Damn, I would have to go back and look at that image. I can't tell. She looked like she got messed up each time. Right, like you, she <laughs> fell out the top of a light tower. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. She got like pushed by, by little Charlie of the Chocolate Factory looking boy out the great glass elevator down. It's 
thing. I remember when the RV tumbled. We remember um there was a tree that went through the windshield that barely missed Jim's head, and like Tabitha was out cold, like she was laid out at the bottom of the RV. And Jim, yeah, she was out. Jim was struggling to try to wake up. He couldn't do nothing, but he tried. He really did try to help her, but she was she was knocked out. Yeah, she was definitely out. I I'm nervous to show this picture. I don't know if it means anything. I, in my, I think I, you could show it. It, 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 it I feel like that's just behind the scenes. I don't think it's a spoiler. I, yeah, it could be. Smooth. I think it's just for fun. You, can, right, I think you can show it. Let's pull it up there. Yeah. <laughs> they sitting there waiting for their mama. <laughs> hey, was she in that outfit? I mean, I know Ethan was in that so. outfit. Yeah, I think that's just a promotion. That's probably yeah. just a promotion. I, I, I think Ethan be posting a lot of stuff. Oh, the character that actor that plays Ethan, he posts a lot of behind the scenes photos from the set um, on Instagram every week. So shout out to him for doing that. He's been helping keeping it fun. But I yep. think, yeah, this is one of those that they were just filming in the hospital. They happen to be there. Yeah. Uh, one thing that Avery it's Conrad also made of the hospital, right? It's not what we've seen her at, though. Nah, but they they do film on location in a lot yeah. of places. Um, one thing that Avery Conrad mentioned was that when they do film, they don't film like one episode at a time. They're filming right. like two or three episodes at a different time, and they don't really know how it's going to all be edited together till later. Yeah. And even I'll say this: he wasn't. Extremely happy when he heard his sister was all right. Like, you know what? Yeah, you, Yo, he's been, been going he, through some things. He's like, been having a rough day. My man, first of all, <laughs> you think that Sarah is a monster? You know what I'm saying? Because like when he <laughs> when he gave her that mean mug, that was it for me. <laughs> you know. And then on top of that, like clearly he's seeing people like getting kidnapped and tortured and stuff. And then his dad, he's worried about his dad. You know that was out in the RV. Like even as like yo, this, he's this really, really the fun adventure that I thought it was anymore. And he got yelled at because of a dried out magic marker. That ha that yeah, happened. Right. That, but yeah. at the end, it was a terrible, you see him drawing, a terrible it's, thing. It's a terrible, terrible insult. He, at the end of the episode, you see him drawing pictures like Victor. I mean, I, I don't think yeah. that's not that's not a coincidence that they had him doing that. You know what well, I mean? Well, he's been drawing though. He drew uh, a picture of himself. Yeah, but the fact that they had him drawing that picture, like with the crayons, like, but I think they're trying to say something. And yeah, in like the, in the promotional footage, like in, in in the beginning of the trailer, when they, I mean, you know, when they show when they're doing the music and stuff, they show they show Victor's mail uh, lunchbox. Then they show the picture of the two people, and then it's Ethan's cane leaning up against that right there, and they have that all in one shot. You know what I mean? So. And that's not a shot that happened in the show. Tony, they people in the live together. chat, people in the live chat are asking if you could zoom in because they want to read what's written All on right. the sign, if possible. I don't know if I can. When, when I, there was a, I think yeah. the probably the most interesting thing there is that it says level two stairs, patient rooms, two 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 zero that or through two two four zero, and I think Tabitha's in two two twenty five. So it's kind of sort of pointing, you know, to her room. So they're they're in the waiting room, basically. Yeah, it's a page that says specialist, consultant suites, nurses station, cafeteria, gift shop. Yeah. I don't room. I don't think they've altered that in any way. I think they're like in a real hospital. Yeah, they're probably you know, filming in a real like a real hospital. You know, they're just saying that, like, hey, we're waiting for our mom. This show doesn't have that big of a budget to be building hospitals yet. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm telling you, like maybe they're, they're in the not going out like that. It's still only on MGM, you know. <laughs> um, but you, uh, Tony was right. Like they've been doing a lot of foreshadowing with Ethan. Um, I'm I'm hoping it's not going to end up being something crazy for our characters' sake. But Ethan did give Victor that drawing of himself. And he was like, you know, if I die, at least you have a picture of me. And it made me immediately think of Victor's picture that his sister drew, that Eloise drew, that he kept in the trunk. And it triggered him. Um, they are. It does seem like they're doing some uh, cyclical foreshadowing that Ethan might grow into the next uh, man child that's going to be drawing pictures, foreshadowing yeah. future events. You saying like like he's gonna be like like the, the new Victor, Omar, like like Michael turned to new Omar and shit. And yeah, and Victor was real happy when Ethan could see the boy in white because Victor said, you know, after a while, I'm I'm assuming he aged out. Um, he couldn't mm -hmm. see the boy in white anymore. Not until Ethan. But Victor said, said that I didn't want your picture because all bad things happen to my friends. Right. He's that like, was, that was more was a my friend. response. Well, yeah, and the things that people draw. 
happen. Don't be drawing yourself and then saying, <laughs> you know, you're going to be dead because, you know, I don't want bad things because all the things happen. Even Jade was pointing it out. He's like, yo, why is this little girl drawing uh, Civil War soldiers that are chasing me in my visions? It's like, why are her drawings happening to Jade? So well, because they, they happened. Like, they already happened or they saw them. Because, you know, Victor was like, you know, you draw those pictures so that you can, the pictures remember. You know, that I don't, I don't yeah. think they have predictive uh, qualities, but they do, you know, I mean, this is what Ethan has been saying. He was just like, yo, like, the pictures tell a story, you know. Now, why people have not sat down and, like, gone to town on these pictures, no pun intended, <laughs> I don't know. I think we had a little bit of that with uh, Tabitha for a second. Yeah, Tabitha and Jade for like one like, scene kind of got it. It was just like, oh, uh, light tower. Okay, forget the rest. I'm like, the whole show is right here. <laughs> the whole show. <laughs> picks up this one picture of the tower. Yeah, she's like, oh. <laughs> uh, Think Story, another great YouTube channel is in the building rocking with us. And he says, uh, great discussion. Uh, what, up, what up, my dude? I'm, Thank you for, for stopping by. E man, I'm surprised boy didn't come in here and go, let's talk about something else. Like, we, we can't, we can't, don't look at those pictures right now. That, that's not important right now. Let's, he would have no, they didn't get close enough. If they got closer, Boyd would have shown, shown up. up. Like, I got <laughs> six cents. Dude, I have to be here. What are you talking about? Shh, don't let's not talk about that. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, when Victor was drawing that picture, boy, what you drawing? He came with that and that thing. He was quick. You know, what the fuck are you drawing over there? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe Boyd's controlling this on. No, uh, area code 708. Yeah, I can't hear that. Yeah, the volume on this call is a little quiet, so I'll read it. Uh, did you guys happen to notice the staff equipment in the hospital seemed like it was out of date and some, some of it was updated? Uh, so did the hospital equip it seemed modern to me? That's fine. Uh, I'm, it's fine. Yeah, all hospitals ain't like. And listen, it, like I that. think I still think it's fake. I mean, someone brought up that move. That what I show was it was uh in uh the, the blacklist they did that where they they drugged the dude's legs, the main character's legs, and Red's legs, and made him think he was paralyzed, and it was all just an elaborate con. <laughs> uh, I I do think this is an elaborate con for her too. I, I I just don't think she escaped and she made it out. I I, I don't believe they would do that. The second part of the message, I wish I could hear it because I'm not sure what they were trying to say. The second part is, what do you guys think about the Tower Power Ranger story? I would, what's the Tower Power Ranger oh, story? What? The power that you know something will happen with time. I, I wish I could play the end of it just to hear it, but let me see if the voice got better. What do you guys think about uh, the tower powering the town? Like if they no unfortunately uh the, i think she's saying that the, the power from the town comes from the tower oh okay i'm okay. not with power oh. in the town okay. i i can't see that i'm not an engineer i don't know how that worked it was a torch <laughs> it was this <laughs> It was, <laughs> yeah, it was a torch yeah but we, we see what these torches can do right they can transport uh, yeah torches, true right? So the torch could no, be you know what I, I'm you know because this was something that I started to kind of pay a little bit more attention to. I think they just have all right. So one thing that they talked about was like whenever you enter this town, it affects people differently, right? And I think we've noticed that some people have stronger connections to this place than others. You might come in here and have a seizure. You might come in and start hearing voices. You might come in and start seeing visions. Um, or you might just have all three and you know all of the above but i think like what we saw especially in this case was that there are certain hot spots that are throughout this place like the ruins were clearly a hot spot where it, it triggered sarah like almost immediately um matter of fact back when we went to uh the end of season one when she went to the other bottle tree or i don't know if it's the same one or not that was a hot spot that's where she started freaking out as well so i think that there are certain places in this place or whatever in this town or whatever that like maybe the spiritual activity is high maybe the whatever i don't know the supernatural presence it's, is it's like a buffy town where there's yeah. a, it's like a it's a foundation for spiritual energy sure. or I, like i said it's just hot spots there are hot spots certain places where if you walk in there and you are connected to this place it'll have an effect on you one way or another 
Uh, area code 276. Yes, it does from Virginia. I was calling. I still think that uh, Donna is uh, evil. I think uh, she's the one that stopped the monsters coming to the RV because they didn't hear the music. The music hadn't started yet. And I think the wedding, that was her daughter getting married to Boyd's son. Hmm. So I think her and her daughter is working Boyd and his son, working both ends and trying to stop them from doing anything to get other people out. Ah. Thank you. So you think Fatima and Donna are a mother daughter con team working against yeah. uh, the boy the Boyd family? Now, you know the first part I could go with, but then when you go into that, it it, it pushes away. I love the call though. Great, yeah, great I do. It's great call. But great I would say, like when you say that Donna could have stopped the monsters, look at we. I can get down with that. I do think that though Randall did it in the wrong way, he will be proven right that there is some type of mold there and everything else. And we have no proof that it's not Donna. Nothing in there proved that it was Donna wasn't the mold. All right, so we could do it. But now, as for Donna being Fatima's mother, I mean, motherly mm -hmm. figure, I think, is why she reacted the way she reacted. You know what I mean? But as for actual mother, I know nah, I can't. I love you like a daughter-in-law. Yeah, I mean, there's just... I mean, didn't Fatima talk about how she was, like, from Iran? Yeah. yeah. She's like, she's from the... Donna don't look like she ever seen Iran. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she's been hunting in Montana or whatever. Come on now. They, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, that's that, a that, weird, that's awkward good. pairing. Yeah, no. I, I mean, don't even know Donna like, uh, like men. Oh, well, do, well, I mean, do we know life, that? In real life, she does. So you see a man, her husband on the show? I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in real life, yeah. But you know, though we have no proof that Donna actually likes men in the show. You know, it would be crazy if she got together with Randall. That'd be amazing. <laughs> next season, <laughs> next season, Randall's gonna definitely be an interesting character coming off of this. Listen, I thought, all right, let's let me ask y'all this: There were no big deaths, and I really thought they were gonna at least have to kill somebody off. Are you mad that they that they kill one person off? Or are you cool with it? Yeah, he's a pa Paul and Reggie. I mean, the, Paul those, and Reggie. Those, those are big losses. Re rest in peace, Reggie. <laughs> Hurts my soul. Both yeah. of them. Hurt this show will never be the same without Reggie. <laughs> nope. Yep. It's, we might as well stop watching now. Reggie's gone. <laughs> I thought somebody No, I, I don't think they needed that. I mean, like, here's the thing. I don't, I don't want death to be... Because they do stuff like this in the comics, you know, where, like, uh, death becomes this big trope. And after a while, it kind of loses its effect, you know, if everybody's just going to die all at random times. Like, if a death is going to happen, I, I want it to mean something, you know. Um, so I don't think they needed a death to happen. Um, but, yeah, I'm fine with the fact that nothing major happened in that regard. And what do you think? Oh, this ain't Game of Thrones. Like, we don't we don't need that to happen. We don't need a purple wedding. We don't need a I don't need that trauma. Like, I, I don't need that trauma. In addition, to got that, I got I got freaked out when Julie got Real taken life by the um the cicada monster. Like when that happened, I screamed. I was like, no, not her. Like I didn't like her, but she grew on me. Um, another thing is that this show, like, it 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 doesn't really need that to move the narrative forward um i think one of the best things that they did this season was more so distinguish themselves from other shows by sidestepping and avoiding the stereotypical death i think that was different i think i appreciate it um and i think that it's gonna have bigger ramifications later on when we least expect these characters to be taken out because, like, I think, like, right now, some of us probably have a vision in our head, our dream team, or we have our prediction of who's going to be assembled to finally solve this mystery. And then it's going to hit us even more if somebody um, dies at that time. Now, a character we haven't talked about tonight, uh, Misty has a quick question about, because uh, we did see her. Right? T. Colin from New Orleans again. My question was, do we think Tilly is still sus in the prayer circle she was holding she had seven people do you think this means something okay we got one person shaking yeah hey, 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 right, so let's go e-man e e seems confident anthony's not let's 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 let the big man e man look i've been saying tilly has been sus for a long time now i will say that th that whole prayer thing threw a wrench in my you know in my <laughs> suspicions but at the same time listen i've seen demons 
quote scripture. You know what I'm saying? I've seen it happen, you know, in movies and stuff. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I've always said when it comes to like horror, anything is two types of people. I don't trust is and is, I'm not trying to be racist, sexist or ages is little white kids and old white ladies. They always are a problem. Those two. So Tilly's still on my list. Um, as far as Tilly being sus, nah, I don't think for me, I don't think she's sus, honestly. I think it's a misdirect from the writers. I think she more so fills in a role or a job that other characters do in the show. One thing is like we saw that everybody seems to have a job. We have a bartender, we have a waitress, we have all these people who oh, we have a priest, we have a religious leader. And then when those characters died or those their roles, um, they grew out of their roles. Other characters came in to step into their role. Um, I think we were all nervous when we saw that Marielle showed up and she was also a doctor because we already know on TV, you can't have two people that could do the same thing. Um, but I don't think Tilly is sus. I think she's more so filling the role that Father Katri left behind and having a religious figure. I was I was more so like just thinking that she was just going to be a background character and just be more of a, a plot point to get Marielle to show her addiction again. But it ended up evolving into much more than that. I, but I don't think she's sus. All right, Phil, what, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, I definitely think they're laying the seeds for her to be sus. I guess I'll be the one that rides on the fence. Uh, I, I mean, it's very convenient. There's a lot of moments. She could just be a busybody, though. She could just be somebody that likes to get in people's business and... But she knows everyone's she, business. She knows everyone's <laughs> business. Everyone. In, in, she just in, got here. <laughs> it's true. I mean, she but that's but she she's, she's an older woman. That's what old like you know. She's playing that stereotype. Yeah, like she's, she's always sticking it. her head out the window in everybody's tea. Like what's what's going on outside out here? She's and the early she's of the island here. She she she's just getting in everyone's business. Be 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 friendly with her. But no, I I I thought she was suspect like i said never trust the ones with the smile never trust the hippies dancing in the rain i've been to enough hippie festivals don't, don't, <laughs> trust, don't trust those hippies dancing in the rain they'll they'll slice you like reggie uh hey, hey, amy says let me take the super chat real quick amy says i think the writers are throwing things out there to make donna look sus she's probably not it would be too obvious i mean i i, I am with kenny's mom all day that's what i said from the beginning i'm sticking with it yeah, hey, you know what? Supply. Yeah, that's that's a good one because if they're gonna copy the lost vibes, I'm not gonna be surprised if she bust out some perfectly clean English. <laughs> that would be yeah, when she gets bagged up without a sound. <laughs> uh, Jess says the boy the boy and white homie for life killed these hoes, can't sleep at night. F Donna, we're a hand, we're on her heads, they gone us because of that bitch there. Hey, you know, listen, I I Number one, I would say Liz is a is a is a friend fan of the of the show and, and a friend of this show. So I got nothing but love for her and everything else. So I, I am not with the F Donna situation like like that and everything else. But I appreciate the super chat. Uh and, and vegan chef says, Can we all agree that boy does really good in these types of shows? I mean the actor, if you're talking about the actor himself, yes, of course. I mean he's 100%. He's amazing. I say he might yeah. get nominated for Emmy. What, what has he ever been bad in? The campaign is. He, he he was even bad in those two horrible make Matrix sequels. Sorry, people that like the, the, the two. This, but even he's. I don't think I've ever seen Harold be bad in something. No, he does his thing. He's from Brooklyn, baby. Come on, stand up, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, stand up in the chat. It's from Brooklyn, he can't be bad. This is what it is. This is the way it goes. Uh, people say so the monsters mean absolutely nothing. I, I, I don't think so. We talked about this a little bit earlier that they may have been losing that weight this season. But as E Man said, they were trying to build a new threat, a bigger threat than the monsters. So maybe that's why they were put in the back burner. Uh, Karma and Super Chat, thank you. Says anyone that trusts Tilly needs to go in the box. They need to go in. If you trust Tilly, you need to go in the box. You know, not uh, the box, that, though. I guess that I, I, I guess that's nobody that, goes in the box. That's what I meant. I guess you said E-Man go in the box. Oh no. Don't put E-Man in the box. I gotta go in the box. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust Tilly. <laughs> I don't trust Tilly. 
I mean, I, I met Ed. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm not saying like, oh, y'all better give me a talisman. Like, not me. <laughs> not me. <laughs> I, I would say so N- Nishi Nice says Sons of Anarchy. I'd say the character of Pope wasn't well fleshed out because Sons of Anarchy was in the comical point of the series at that point, and they didn't flesh out his character. I still think his performance was good with uh, well, Tig and his daughter and all that sort of stuff. I just think the character of Pope was poorly fleshed out by Sutter and company, uh, just like a lot of the, the adversaries on Sons were. Very rarely did they have a uh, good setup. Anyways, but but yes, he was great on Suns too. Now right, let's take a couple of more, then we're gonna get up out of here. Be everybody mm-hmm. here. We'll be two hours over. So. so, so let's take KP left a couple. So let's listen to one of KP's oh, messages. Okay. I do it. By the way, listen. So, to my listen, how the fuck you know that this guy is doing smart? I've never heard anywhere in the show where like they've mentioned that this man is. So how the fuck do you know that? Please. I know I'm missing something, so just fucking advise me of that shit because I feel fucking... <laughs> I'm not sure where KP's going with that message. Wait, well, how do we know that? What is what? I don't know. I, I, I'm i not sure. I'm not sure, KP. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, but, sorry, buddy. Area code 904. Okay, so it's not really a question, but I was wondering if you guys think that in season three... Tabitha will most, not most definitely, but she'll try to find a way back into the town so she can save her family. But besides that, from the picture that you guys showed on your YouTube live, it showed that um, Julie and the little boy is there. Does that mean that Tabitha is dreaming or is Tabitha like hallucinating? Um, yeah. I mean, we, we talked about this earlier, but to talk about it again, I personally think she's really there. And as for the picture, I think that was just a behind the scenes shot, uh, the, like a, like a set photo that was leaked, uh, that the actors took because this acting team is almost as, as we've all had connections with them, they have a very theater company kind of vibe. So they like to come out and check each other out. So Tabitha in this scene, I could see the actresses playing Julie and, and Ethan wanting to show up. I, I don't think them being there me, has any significance personally. Jesse's saying he he left a really good voice, man. 631, he's, he's saying his thing. Uh, it, it, even if you have left the voice, man, we don't get to it. I'll be back Wednesday. LMR will be here. Phil will be rocking with us, and we'll go through. That'll be the theory stream, as always, on Wednesdays. And we'll break down what we think is going to happen in season two on that one and everything else. So is it uh, we'll so- get to all the calls, I promise you. What was the area code he said? Uh, KP said, how do we know his name is Martin? He said his name. I mean, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> we got, no, we got, that's all we know. There's no ID. <laughs> right. <laughs> nobody runs plates. Place. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, so that's the only thing we could go with. Is that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't lose sleep over that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's. We we get we gotta we gotta take him for face value. Uh, area code six one three. Uh, th- this is a longer one, so we'll we'll definitely pause during it if we have to. Hi, Tony. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to see you all guys together. I have an observation. I think Victor has been in the tower. And he's lying. I think he knows what's going on in the tower. And I think the boy in white told him to bring Tabata to the tower. If you look at the toys that are on the steps of the tower, which are physically there, there's a truck and there is um ambulance, which yeah. match the toy RV that Victor has in his room. It feels like it was all a set and he has been there and he knows what's going on. Um, I think the boy in white does not want anybody getting near the lighthouse like he proved at the end of last season. And I think um, Victor sent Tabata in because Tabata was getting too close to the truth and the boy in white needed to control the situation because I think the lighthouse is a way to travel back in time to when the children existed so that they can be safe before they're sacrificed. I think their sacrifice is 
someone's significance to the uh, beginning of what's going on in the in this in this town and that's why we have to save them and that's why you can hear them in the tower because they were guiding Tabitha. What if you can see that the lens of the lighthouse is broken and you can actually see the fire inside? What if you can use the fire inside somehow to hmm. travel back in time to where the time that the children existed and save them before the be like the silver bullet thing again. Uh just like Boy did with the torch that he lighted up and then he was transported. I don't think the boy in white is good. I don't think that Victor was trying to help Tabitha. Victor has known this for a long time and never helped her. So he helped her this time because the boy in white told him to and I don't think they're doing something good. Hmm. Thank you and great to see you guys all together. Have a good night. Thank you. I, I like your comment. I like everything you're saying. And Victor could be Kaiser Soze. I don't <laughs> put it past his ass. I don't put it past his ass. I, I, I agree with a lot that she's saying. Uh, There's a lot in that comment. I agree with a lot she's saying. I do think it could be a situation. Like, I 100% think that we're dealing with time travel here. I 100% believe that. So, you know what I mean? I, I, that, that, that's, that's what I'm going with. I, I'm, I'm with it on that one. Nobody else is, and it is. But I'm with I don't. You. I don't believe the time travel because, like you said, in the hospital scene, like the tech, that's a flat screen monitor. The technology yeah. is not that old in there, yeah. right? Like, um, but I do, and I also don't think the boy in white is evil. Um, I think that he was more so deterring Boyd and Sarah because they, they, they were there prematurely. Like they, they didn't have. That wasn't the point in the quest that they were supposed to go there, nor were they the right people to go there. Um, that was definitely supposed to be Tabitha's story and Boyd was supposed to go do something else. Something that I love about this show is that um, everybody's filling in a different piece of the puzzle, right? Tabitha's filling out what's going on with the Unkui kids. Boyd is turning into, I don't know, the hero. Um, and Jade is trying to just figure out the symbol. They're all working on different problems that solve the larger mystery. Um, and I, I think that was just him redirecting his pieces so that he can put them in place to to do whatever it is he's really uh, uh, puppeting them to do. You know, I, I, I've heard that with Jamie Lannister when I was doing Game of Thrones. Oh, he's not evil, even though he pushed Bran out the window. Oh, he's not evil. He's Jamie Lannister, this, that, and the other. But he, pushed, he pushed the chick out the window. He couldn't tell her, just walk your ass back down the steps. He couldn't say, you know, you can, you can walk down these steps. That's you not came the way up. out. That's if, not he had, the way out. if he had told her, like, let's uh -huh. just pretend that there was a floating portal. And mm -hmm. he said, well, in order to get out of here, you got to jump out. Like, man, maybe they ain't got time for all that kind of conversation. <laughs> you know, Make, like, I, mean, I know I'd be like, jump out the window. I don't even know you. Who are you? Like, <laughs> It wouldn't I mean, even happen. That, it wouldn't now even happen. We're, we're 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 putting stuff in the show that we ain't seen. Well, that's right? what I'm saying. But uh, but that's the thing. Like we can't assume that like there was another way to do it. Like we have to go with what they gave us so far. And I mean, right now, I in my opinion, I think it's more of a stretch to say that the boy in white is bad because we've seen him do more good than wrong. Um, and also just to the caller's theory. One thing that I like to do in my theories, right, like to really see whether it's got legs or not, is to see, like, is there a simpler way to refute this theory? So, for example, if it was true that the boy in white and Victor were working together and they didn't want nobody at the light tower or whatever, why did they let her get that far? Because she asked Victor, yo, can you help me go there? And he was like, oh, yeah, sure. OK, yeah, you know, I can take you here and here. Like. There would have been so many other opportunities to stop them mm -hmm. if that were true. So that's why I can't really get on board with that. When it comes to the time travel thing, I need I'm not going to say it's not true because we have seen, you know, when she was climbing the steps, all those years and dates, uh, Boyd looking at the bottles and the Civil War stuff. So I do think time plays an element in this. I don't know what element that is. I don't know if it's time travel. I don't know if this has just been a circular uh, cyclical event that just keeps uh, on happening. Um, I'm waiting for more evidence to lean on the time stuff because y'all know, I mean, we've seen so many multiverse and time travel. Th time travel is messy because it's fictional. So like yeah. we don't know what the rules are yet to actually, you know, 
land hardcore on whether something's time travel or not. I mean, is it back to the future rules? Yeah, is it is Bill it, and is Ted? Is it end game? Is it yeah. Bill and Ted? We don't know. So, like for me, I'm I'm backing off on the time stuff for now Hot until I understand the rules. So we gotta pull up the picture then, the picture that was of, of uh, that was on Google of the cast that they left up there was there, and then they changed it. So We'll pull the picture up right now. Maybe, maybe you haven't seen it. And while Tony's pulling up the pictures, we'll we'll be entertained as KP's yelling at me. I'll play some more of uh, I, I, have it, I have it right here. Here we go. Yo, listen. By the way, Reggie, he's a bitch ass. Bitch ass. Fuck that guy. <laughs> All right. Let me show this real quick so that, that you understand where I'm coming from. All right. So we, we, we can see this, right? It's on the screen, Phil. Right? Yes. All right, so when we look here, you see right here, this was on Google. This was the cast that was on Google that was changed. And you can see here that Victor, Scott McCord is Victor. And right here, Vox Smith, who plays the boy in white, his name was Victor. And they changed it to the boy in white. But originally, his name was Victor. Now, I'm not saying that that the people said, oh, they messed up on it, they just messed up. They didn't mess up on nobody else. They got Trudy right. They got Kenny right. They got Jade right. They got Father Cotri right. Well, everything else is right. But what I'm seeing on this thing right here is that that name is the same. Victor is Vox and Victor is Scott. When we look at the picture that was uh, in the beginning, let me see if I can grab this up real quick. Uh, it's not that one. Where is it at? I don't even know. It's over here. Uh, right here. If we look at the picture, it should be just that, that of the photos in the beginning of the person dressed it's like a picture book right now, like, yeah. like the boy in white, right here, right there. That looks like a grown ass man to me. Well, Same yeah. exact clothes. They show this first, the lower. Part of the shorts. We know the boy in white likes to wear those short shorts. So we know this is the same picture and and it's the same trees by it. This don't look like a little boy. And we hear Sarah say that she didn't think it was a little boy. So when I put it all together to me, I mean Yeah, it looks more like the middle aged boy in white. It means it his hair, his hairline's back. Yeah, it's like me. <laughs> And I'm bald, so I can't really talk yeah, no, about no. anybody's hairline. But I'm saying I'm not, you know, I, I'm not. No, he's got the Jack you know. Nicholson hair going on there a little bit. You know, so when I put all that together and I look at all these pictures, to me, I mean, I would say that there has to be a bigger connection between Victor and the boy in white than we than than, than people are putting out. Because why would they have this dude with the same exact name? Yeah, that's not enough for me. I mean, um, I do agree that like there could be an age difference when it comes to the young boy and maybe the drawing. I mean, that's a drawing. We don't I, I don't know. Maybe the person maybe it's two different people that drew it. We don't know. But um, I agree that there could be an age difference there. But I can't find. <laughs> first of all, Google is not reliable when it comes to casting at all. Um, I have seen this happen multiple times. Trust me, I, I look at Marvel theories all the time. They mess that up. It's almost as credible as Wikipedia. Um, even IMDb is not credible all the time. And mm -hmm. the studios have had issues, or not issues, they've had power to manipulate certain things just to avoid spoilers or whatever. So all I'm saying is, I'm not saying they're wrong, it's not enough for me because those things can be easily manipulated. It literally could be a mistake. Because that happened multiple times before in other productions. So I wouldn't use that as like, you know, the actual thing as hardcore evidence. I hear you. I, I would say I remember in Game of Thrones when the Night King was out, uh, the first episode when they showed the Night King the first time, if you look at the credits, it was called Night King. And then after when they came out with the box set and the DVD, they changed it to the Night King. And a lot of Game of Thrones fans were like, that's not the same. They got the Z, the Z in the front. And that's the same. But, but they changed it. I'm not saying that it could 
Could they have messed up and put that out there? We've seen this season that they had some descriptions in there and they changed those descriptions, right? They J- had uh, Jay Ruiz in the live chat says, no one ever comments on why the drawing of the boy in white's mouth is a crow. It does look like a crew. I never noticed that. A that crow or right a raven. Or that unkindness. Or that other bird. The uh, what was the other bird we were talking about earlier? The black, the black bird, the red, the red winged black bird. I I don't know, man. It's it, we. I feel like we're giving a little bit too much stock to children's drawings at this point. Like they don't know what they're doing. Um, but as far as the boy in white, like. I, I, I feel to I I still I'm with him like I I, I with Eman I need to see a little bit more because I know over my time my experience working with like a lot of movie studios working yeah. with a lot of different um PR people so mm-hmm, they they all vary they all different and yeah. God bless this group right here but then you know they they do their best they sometimes make mistakes and it from my experience with them I just felt like this was just one of those slip ups yeah. I think it was a slip up, but it wasn't a slip up because they made a mistake. It was a slip up because they put the wrong name. I'm I'm and glad you name. brought up Game of Thrones. That's the same show that had a whole Starbucks coffee, you know, cup <laughs> on set. So, like, if Game of Thrones, a much more expensive production, could mess up, I'm sure that. Listen, I don't even think MGM thought this show was going to be as big as it was. So, nah. I'm uh, yeah. listen. I'm pretty sure it's like five people working behind the scenes right now. That's it. No, uh, Carmen wants to know, E-Man, is Donna, he's trying to steer us away from the truth. E-Man is Donna. <laughs> Hold on. Karma, Karma. Uh, if you haven't already, I want you to subscribe to my channel, come to my live chat, and then we're going to have a conversation. I want you there to do you that. <laughs> and listen, if you're all he's here. He's taking his hands that. out of his pockets. Come on. Yeah, lady, Sometimes. Lady, lady, thank you for the super chat, lady. Uh, and Mo, uh, Mo Premium Denim says, I'm with the guest host on this theory, Victor would recognize himself if he was the boy in the white. Really, because he didn't re- know he had a sister. Oh, don't, don't give me that. The man forgot he had a sister. Yeah. How are you going to recognize himself? Again, so I, I, I don't know about that. It's not the same person when you look at the young Victor and the, and, the, and the kid playing. But I myself don't think that they messed up. I think they messed up by putting that out there. That's why they tried to fix their mistake. But I do believe it's connected. But only only thing that's going to happen. But again, as I was going to say, if you're not subscribed to mm-hmm. E-Man, the movie blog, Phil the Issues Guy, or my channel, please do so. It helps us out a lot. And we all do live streams. We all talk about the same show. We 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 we, we claim to be a frumily. Let's really act like one, right? And let's show everybody some love up in there. And my man, Perp, who was up in here and everything else. So definitely do that. And you know what I mean? So Get on there and, and and talk that shit to him on his channel. He, he waiting. For it. He, he waiting with love. With love. I'll, I'll, I don't fight nobody. I'm <laughs> loving, not a fighter. All right, we'll take one more fill, and we out. Okay, let's try this one. Uh, oh, battery exhaust. Battery exhaust. We we exhausted the battery. We've been Damn. on so long. We've exhausted at these battery. Uh, Eric code eight five seven. Oh, sorry, my volume's down. My volume's oh. down. Secondary camera. There we go. Get the backup. Uh, let's see. Let's see if this is this is a good last call. Let's see. Hi, uh, my name's Frank. I'm calling from Massachusetts, and I actually had a theory of being that they think from the from the, the pocket dimension. What if Tabitha got transported to a different parallel universe? Sure. That's pretty much my theory. Yeah. Thank you. I agree. It could be. I, I've talked mm-hmm. about parallel universes and wormholes in the Einstein uh, Rosen Bridge. I think it links everything together. If you're looking at how people can be come from somewhere else and be somewhere in the same spot, the Einstein Rosen Bridge links it together. How people could travel back in time, the Einstein Rosen bring, Bridge brings it together. Far away trees to me isn't magical. It's just made to look like a tree. It's really a tele- uh, Einstein Rosenbridge device that teleports people, but they have it looking like a tree, so it looks natural. Uh, what do y'all think about alternate dimensions? Um, I think, yeah. 
I don't think it's a parallel dimension. I think it's the same main dimension. I think they kind of already told us what it is, and they're going to remind us again later on. Dale said it. It's a pocket dimension where they are in Frumville. I think she really went back to the main real world. It's it's good to say, you know, yeah, they could do that, but we don't have any evidence to support that it is a parallel universe. Right now, anything is possible, but there's no evidence to support that. Um, as of right now, just going with the evidence that they have shown us, she's she's back in the real world. Yeah, I think that uh, there is evidence that there is multiple dimensions, but not in the case um, because, you know, I do think that I agree. I do think that Tabitha is in the real world, but even within from there's clearly a different dimension within a different dimension because we just saw that where the people, the three victims were in another place, but at the same time they were in the town. So whether that's a spiritual dimension, whether that's a metaphysical like quantum physics entanglement type of situation i don't know but there's definitely multiple places you could be and these faraway trees are taking people places and doing things and i mean it's not even just the trees if you open up a door get kicked you know get a boot to the face and go out of lighthouse you somewhere else i mean anything could happen i'm gonna relent my answer to go one more call <laughs> hi this is diane from milwaukee um the I'm really torn between with her falling out of the, um, out of getting out of Fromville there. Either it's true and she really is out, but it can't be that easy because if it's that easy, everybody else, um, they could make, you know, uh, Victor show them where the tree is and they could all go in the tree thinking that they're going to get out. So it can't be that easy. I think you have to be chosen to be pushed out of the tree. The kids have to choose you. And I think the kids are going to be choosing, if they choose anyone else again, they might choose Fatima because she's pregnant. But I do not think just anybody can go to the bottle tree and go out through the White House. I think you need to be chosen. Um, other than that, I was watching the show and when the, he said was near the music box, all I did was keep saying, stomp on it, stomp on it, stomp on it. And thank God he stomped on it. Well, it's gonna be a long wait till season three. Bye. Great call. Really good call. Uh as for being chosen to go there, we, we have no proof. We just seen Victor's mom was gonna go there. Victor brought her there. I don't know if she was actually chosen to go there, but she just went through and it worked. I think uh, yeah. Yeah, she was the only other person who heard about the children, right? It's yeah. only her and Tabitha. I think I think it is true because one, if there if there are roles you know, that everyone has. I mean, we're seeing that different people have different roles because all of this stuff is one big quest, but everybody got a different type of quest when they get here because there are a lot of parallels between Tabitha and Victor's mom. Um, and in season one, it was something I think Victor said where he says, like, he chooses who, uh, the boy in white chooses who he appears to. And not only does he choose who he appears to, but clearly, like, the connection he has with different people is different. I don't think, I mean, I guess he kind of talks to Victor. Um, he talked to Sarah telepathically. But, you know, like we saw in the lighthouse, this is the first time he got physical. Like, it was the first time we heard his voice, him actually talking, and he was physical to actually touch her. Um, so I, I think there are degrees and levels to all this stuff. Um, and it might depend on how connected you are to this place and mm -hmm. tabitha coming from where she started to now she's definitely graduated in terms of her level of connectivity to this place from not seeing anything to you know uh, um you know uh seeing the visions of the little ashy kids and now actually being able to see and talk to the boy in white so she's graduated some level um and i think that matters mm -hmm. And uh, KP, sorry, sorry. Uh, let, 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 let me let me get a little shit from KP here at the end. Phil, you better not be better not be screening my calls. I'm not screening I'm not your calls. Because I'm doing a little bit of it's, It was three minutes. Your last call was three minutes. I'm not playing a three minute message. Be better. Um, <laughs> leave leave <laughs> leave, thir leave thirty second messages. That's better, not three minute messages. And I'll play them more often. He said, "Be better." 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I just want. Well, right, we'll take this last time. super chat. Coco says conscious tra- t- consciousness t- tethers and travels between uh, places and time. Number one, Boyd Adventures combo visions. Number two, chosen three shown in two simultaneous places with empty eyes. Three, Tabby leaving the town with an exception type kick. I, I agree. I, I think it's alternate dimensions going on. And I think that they reboot this whole thing. I think that will happen with a flood. I think they'll do that next season and everything else. That's where it's going to go down. I think that when you hear Tabitha in the cave with Victor and she specifically says, where is this water coming from? I think that that's showing that there's something underneath there that's forcing the water up from the underneath the ground. I think they're going to flood this whole place out. Elgin going here, getting, he, when he came on the channel, he said it wasn't like he spit up a little bit. He said it's like he spit up a river. That's the way it was told to him. Like he spit up a river of water out of his mouth when he woke up. So it wasn't like it's a little cough and cough and anything else. He was like, you know, he was under the water and stuff for a long time. But we'll go through all that stuff. I think I want to thank my guests for being there. I'll be back Wednesday. So make sure if you're not subscribed, we'll be back. We're going to talk all theories on Wednesday, as we always do. Let me thank uh, the movie blog, Anthony and, e- and Emmanuel E-Man. Please let the people know what's going on in your channel and what you got coming up next. Oh, for me? Um, yeah, you, both of you. Yeah, well, for me right now, I am going to be going back and going back through season one of From, going through it with a new nice. lens, cutting through every episode, and looking for the little details that we might have missed the first time through. I know that there were a lot of details that I, I wanted to highlight more in my season two coverage that i didn't mainly because it was very specific uh to season one i'm going to circle back and do that and see if we can look at this with a new lens nice that's what it is hey man what's going on with your channel yeah um so i've been doing that already um and i i I was slacking because season two was picking up so much i didn't have time to finish uh my season one coverage so i will also be going back to finish season one um and uh you know the value that is in there is like whether you're a new person from or if you are you know already caught up i'm still going to include stuff in there for you um that you probably did miss because i know i missed a lot of stuff the first time i watched the first season so i'll be going back and redoing a lot of those things uh with some deep dives as well um i do have a theory video that i am going to drop um which i do believe is going to answer the question of who threw the rope um and what the whole entity was like i think the actual entity um we have a lot of clues in the show and outside of the show um what this entity was for this whole season so i'll be working on that and dropping that asap um and then of course i got my friday live chats every friday 7 p.m central standard time we go through all the news uh in the entertainment world i give my thoughts opinions and stuff on that and then of course we also have on wednesdays uh 7 p.m central time um we'll be going over se- uh, secret invasion you know just reacting and talking about the episode as well so that's what i got going on subscribe hit those notifications definitely do that to both of their channels and fill the issues guy do it to his channel too yeah this, what do you got going on this coming sunday joe dirty locks and i will be back finally uh talking um We'll talk about from Joe finally wants to talk about some from which is scary because he doesn't like anything. So uh, from fans, you might not want to check that out. But we're also going to be talking about the bear season two, which was an amazing season of television. And it's been so long since we got back together. We're also going to be talking about the final season of Picard and how my Star Trek uh uh, love was was reinvigorated that star trek got influenced by the orville and brought back what star trek was for a second uh so yeah joe and i will be on on sunday and we'll, matt and i will be back in the next couple of weeks for season four episode one of the sopranos going through that uh so check that out and i'll be doing fourth of july drunk drunk uh for my phone probably because i'm an idiot <laughs> no <laughs> listen thank you all for coming on Again, subscribe to everyone's channel. We have put all the mods have put their links to their videos in the chat. I'll put them on the video so you can find it right in the description box so it's easy for you to find everything else. Hopefully, y'all come back uh, before the season starts and we'll, we'll have another discussion and everything else. It's a great time and everything else. We'll be uh, talking and, about that too, Chris. Sorry. And definitely uh, talk, uh, and definitely my man, Pert Minded, who was up in here, check his channel out too because he was here and he just had some technical difficulties. 
And if you like the way I do this, please thumbs up this, spread this across the realm, and of course, subscribe. And until next time, you know who it is. Peace.